year in 1960. The deep back for the Pittsburgh Steelers is Rich Ehrenberg. As the Steelers won the toss and they elected to receive, Septian kicks off and we are underway. It is taken by Sam Washington off on the right wing. Washington bobbles the ball, returns it to the 12 yard line. Not an auspicious start for the Pittsburgh Steelers. The quarterback will be Mark Malone. The running backs, Walter Abercrombie and Frank Pollard. The receivers, Stallworth and Lips outside. The tight end, Benny Cunningham, activated this week, coming off of injured reserve. Offensive line, Benny, Wolfley, Webster, Long, and Tooch Ilkin. as you predicted, gets the call. He has to have the running attack. Defensively, too tall. Dutton, White, and Jeff Coat, those are all number one draft choices. Hickman, Lockhart, and Rohr are the linebackers. And in the secondary, they'll have their hands full. Walls, Fellows, Clink, Scale, and Down. You're already seeing substitutions. The Cowboys love to substitute on those third and long situations. A loss of a yard, second and 11. Nine yards to the 20. It'll be third down in a couple. Walter Abercrombie. Good quickness, good strength. He said, this is a homecoming for me. He was born down the way here in Waco, Texas. He's got family here today. Good start on the drop play for Abercrombie. Dallas Cowboys anticipating the pass. And that's one way to slow down that pass rush, Charlie. The Steelers come in now with two tight ends as Gothard comes in to join Cunningham. The wide receivers come out short yard and third down and two. Frank Pollard, and he may not pick it up. I think he's short, Charlie. They're challenging that Dallas defensive line. They ran right up the gut at Ed Tall jones Watch the right side of your screen. Webster doing a good job of moving Dutton, excuse me, that's Dutton. They moved back from that side. But Randy White able to get in there. They got Lockhart in there to make the stop. That Pollard trying to get over the top. Just simply did not make it. There's Randy White, 54, right in the middle of your screen. He's not in on that play. That's a good job by Craig Wolfley, number 73 of blocking. Fourth down and one. Here is the kick by Newsom with Leon Gonzalez. Set Great return. kick, Charlie. 20-yard line. To the 30. Down. They're going to blow the play dead. A 51-yard kick and a 13-yard return by Leon Gonzalez. And Preston Gothard, the tight end, was down for the Steelers. Now let's look to the Dallas Cowboy offense with Danny White, Tony Dorsett, James Jones. The wide receivers are Hill and Renfro, and Doug Cosby is the tight end. That offensive line, Paz Derek is scheduled to start. It may be Schultz. We'll check that in a moment for you. Titans are Rafferty, Peterson, and Cooper, the offensive line. It is Schultz in there, Charlie. Paz Derek, I guess, is not ready to go. Still bothered by that knee injury. So Dallas goes to work on their own 33. First down, no score in the game. Dorsett, the remaining back. Rim throw in motion. Play action. Quick screen, left side to Tony Hill. Hill near the 40-yard line. He'll pick up about seven. It'll be second and three. Clayton makes the tackle. The defensive front three, Keith Willis, John Goodman, and Edmund Nelson for the Steelers. Merriweather, Little Cole, and Brian Hinkle, the linebackers. Woodruff and Clayton on the corner. Shell and Williams at the safety. They mark it at the 39, so it is second down and four. Cosby in motion. And out to Cosby, and he's out of bounds. Just before the first down marker, needed another step to pick up the first down. Charlie, one of the signatures of this Pittsburgh defense is the positioning of the nose tackle. They like to angle him on the center. Look at him right there. He's angled in toward the center. Rafferty, Tom Rafferty. And that's John Goodman. Goodman, by the way, six foot six. 
really a big nose tackle. That's a coming trend in the NFL. You see him using great power to crack the pocket on that play. Does he give up something by angling in? Well, I think it's a little more difficult for him to go back to his left. I think it's kind of tough. Cincinnati 7, the Giants nothing. That score just in. Had to come early in that ballgame. Started the same time as this one. Third down and just about a foot. Cowboys pick it up. John Williams has the first down and Dwayne Woodruff with a tackle. Mark it at the 45-yard line. Brian Solon on the extra tight end. He's the third tight end in there. He's a busy guy. They play him mostly at uh, linebacker now, and he's also on the tight end uh, core in the short yardage. I said, how do you go to all those meetings? He said, well, it's defensive meetings all week, and then Friday I go to the offensive meetings. Huh? Does that tell you that the offense is easier? You no, no. Not here in week. Dallas it doesn't, Charlie. At the Dallas 45-yard line, first down. No score. And no game. Dorsett is stopped. On his first carry, it'll be second down and 10. Mike Merriweather with the tackle. One of the people we're going to watch today, number 57 in the black uniform, Mike Merriweather. Merriweather is a, an impact player. You see him right there in the middle of your screen, number 57. Watch him get off the block. He delays here momentarily. Jim Cooper blocking on him, number 61, and then slips into the secondary to help make that tackle. Keith Willis, number 92, the first man there on the back. They mark it for a loss of a yard, so it's second down and 11. And White drops it off far side. And here goes Dorsett. 39-yard line of Pittsburgh. Donnie Shell makes the tackle 17 yards on the play as a receiver. He's an underrated receiver. Hey, he's a fine receiver, but the key here is the read of the blitz. Robin Cole right up the gut. Danny White just cuts it short and flips that little toss out there. That's like a long handoff to the running back. Here's Dorsett all the way on that play. Swinging out. And that ball perfectly thrown. Boy, that's just like handing it out there. And once you get him in the open, he'll hurt you. First down, Dallas. At the Steelers, 39. No score. We're in the first quarter. With just over 10 minutes to go. White to throw. This is Jones. 34-yard line. James Jones in his fifth year. Number three draft choice back in 80. But he missed... Uh, Two and a half years with a knee injury. Well, he's got to fly in time now. Timmy Newsom is injured. Number 30 is uh, not on the field today. Ah, there's a stat that we've looked at, Charlie. 80% of their games here in Texas Stadium. Boy, they are tough. And you know that's a home field advantage. Now look at this. They also own the best record in the NFC against the FC team, 38 and 14. Most impressive. Second down and five. No game. Dorsett is shut off at the 34-yard line by John Goodman. And it'll be third down and five. So you look for the Cowboys to throw here. Charlie, as impressive as that stat is against the AFC, now look at the series record of these two teams. The Steelers lead. There aren't many teams that can claim that in their rate in their series with the Cowboys. And they've won the last five straight. Now these two teams don't meet that often, including the big two victories that we talked about earlier in the Super Bowl. Third and five. And here is Mike Merriweather with the sack. You talked about Merriweather a moment ago. In addition to everything else, he plays in the special team. Boy, I'll tell you, he is fast. They say he can run a 4-5-40. Watch him coming from the right side. He just blows by Chris Schultz. And he's on top of Danny White before White can even move and strip him to the ground. But we've got a flag now, Charlie. Two drop downfield at the 16-yard line. You can tell with the crowd reaction against the Steelers. Officials sorting that out, and that is a big break for these Pittsburgh Steelers. It will give the Cowboys a first down. At the 29-yard line of Pittsburgh. Landry talking to Jim Myers, the offensive line coach there. Sideline, deciding how they're going to approach it now that they're into Pittsburgh territory. And the Cowboys with the first break of the ball game, it would have been fourth down and about 15. And they would have been punished. And Dorsett is just, first they string him out, and then Eric Williams takes him out of bounds 
at the 32-yard line. So you lose about three. It'll be second down and 13. So thus far, Tony Dorsett's quest of 31 yards has been for the tough to come by. Well, those are not easy yards against the Pittsburgh Steelers defense, Charlie. In the league, they rank 15th against the run, but they're tough. I'll tell you, they got some big physical people up front, and the strength of this defense is in that linebacking core. On the door set update, three carries, he's lost three yards rushing. And now John Williams is in as a blocking back. A little play action. And the stop. Keith Willis gets this one. No flag, so that officially is the first sack of the ballgame. Another one was erased by the penalty. Charlie, that's an outstanding play by the big left end, and he's coming back to the form that allowed him to sack the quarterback 15 times back in 83. Did not have that big year last year, but watch the left side of your screen. He's alone. Danny White did not have an open receiver, and there was no place to go. That sets him back, puts him in a very long yardage situation, third and almost 20 yards. And they'll come from the shotgun. is trapped at the 30-yard line, way shy of the first down. He'll miss it by 10 yards. He picks up seven. It'll be fourth down. Brian Hinkle was, as a linebacker, responsible for mirroring the quarterback. He stayed up there as protection against the last-minute dropout by a running back or against the scramble from White. I think he was surprised. White just pulled it down and took off. Hinkle able to stop him, but not until he got back almost to the original line of scrimmage. Ogaboom to hold and Septian, a field goal attempt from 47 yards away. That is within his range, but he's got a bad right shoulder. He told you about it yesterday. And he misses, pulls it to the left side from 47 yards away. And so, with 6.53 left to go, we're in the first quarter and we have no score. We'll come to Merlin Olsen, Texas Stadium. Steelers will have the ball for the second time. Oh, they certainly will. You know, it's interesting. I asked Chuck Knoll just before the game. I said, does it help you to have this kind of an edge when you've beaten a team five times in a row? You saw that long drive by the uh, Cowboys there that ended up with zero points. That hurts you when you can't convert the problem the Cowboys had. He said, I don't know if it helps you to have an edge on a team in numbers, but it certainly can't hurt you. Steelers from their own 30-yard line. He has to fight for five yards to the 35. It'll be second down and five. Abercrombie has asked for the football. He wants to run it more. In particular, he wants to run up the gut. But this Cowboy defense is very tough against the running game inside. There's Abercrombie coming from the far side behind the block right there by Pollard. The lead by Terry Long, 5'11", one of the shortest guards, the offensive lineman in the league. But good power running there. Let's go and look at Randy White. He's one we're going to focus on all day. Draws two blocks, still gets outside, gets his hand on the ball carry. Malone, oh. complete first down to Benny Cunningham, the tight end. That is the first reception for a tight end this year. Of course, the first reception for Cunningham coming off of injured reserve. That was That's good. a major note. <laughs> Here it is. And that has got to be a great relief for the Steelers. Benny Cunningham, of course, has been on IR, has been injured. They're glad to have him back. Very often, they've had wide receivers uh, open and tight ends open. They go to the wide receivers. They simply trust them. They don't they haven't trusted Nelson in particular, the guy who's been playing in there. And here's Frank Pollard. Pollard comes back against the grain, moves to the Dallas 46-yard line. He picks up five. It'll be second down and five. That last pass play to Cunningham was good for 14 yards. We've promised to follow number 54, Randy White, give you an idea of what kind of day he was having. That's Webster, 52, and Wolfley, 73. And if they really are trying to keep him inside on that play, Pollard cutting back on his own, and White reading the play well, gets a piece of the tackle. He is so strong and so quick. He really is all over the field. And here's Pollard. He drives the right side and goes to the 44-yard line. It'll be third down and around three yards to go. A couple of scores just in. Cincinnati in front of the Giants, seven, I think that we showed you earlier. And this one, Detroit three and Washington, nothing. Murray with a 33-yard field goal.
Third down and three. No score. And we have four and a half minutes left to go. We're in the first quarter at Texas Stadium. from Stalwart, who's one of the league's premier receivers. That ball is well thrown by Malone, but thrown low. And watch it right here. Tipped by, I believe that Dutton got his hand on that ball. And it went right into the hands of Stalwart. So once the ball is interrupted like that, it will take your concentration off of it. Pure reaction on Stalwart's part, but couldn't hang on to it. And Newsom's first punt, good for 51 yards. He goes for the corner. Gonzalez moves under it, and he's got it. It'll be inside the 10, outside the 10, right at the 10-yard line. Good kick. We have no score. 4-16. Time remaining. We're in the first quarter. Pitty, be sure to be with us on November the 2nd. Looking forward to that one. No score. Dallas has the ball at their own 10-yard line. And the give is inside. As Dorsett, everybody watching him, swings wide to the right side. And the ball carrier is John Williams. Landry will call all of the plays, basically, for this uh, Dallas offense. One of the first coaches to simply say, I want to control the game plan. Now, he's matching wits with one of the brightest young defensive uh, coaches in football. And we'll, we'll give you a peek at him later on. He is not on the field. Tony Dungy is upstairs, but we managed to sneak a picture of him. We'll show you that in a minute. Second down and eight at the 12. Dorsett the remaining back. Dorsett was closer to the record when he had breakfast this morning. He's lost three yards rushing already. We've got whistle. I think they took too much time. Charlie, Chuck Knoll rolling players in and out of the game today. Gary Dunn now in a nose tackle. He's, you can, can you believe this? Four weeks ago, they operated on his knee. Orthoscopic surgery. He's now on the field. No believes that on a hot day like today you've got to move your players in and out and on this field the Cowboys and the Cowboys are in the shade the Steelers in those black uniforms are along the sideline where the Sun beats down on them that's being home field and visitor Charlie <laughs> that's what it's all about that's what it's all about here's Dorsett yards to the 12-yard line. It'll be third down and eight to go. Brian Hinkle with the tackle. Tony Dorsett. Just such a master. A little misdirection. Starts to the left, cuts back to the right. Look how he uses that blocking. I, I think that Dorsett sets blockers up about as effectively as any back I've ever seen. Now he needs 26, but at 10,000, he's, he's, taking, a long he's time. picking him up. He's, he's biting and chewing. But it's like it's watching an artist at work, because Dorsett is to running backs, but Michelangelo is to ceiling. Wow. Oh, all right, Charlie. Here's Danny White. Look out. Pressure. Mary Weather checks him just as he released it to Dorsett. Dorsett with a spin and a turn to the 19. Woodruff with a tackle. Ooh, that was close to being a safety. Reminiscent, Charlie, of a little flip pass that got Danny White in trouble against the uh, Detroit Lions. He's under all kinds of pressure here. Keith Willis, 93, coming in. He's going to flip that ball right here before Merriweather knocks him to the ground, gets it to Dorsett. Dorsett can't get away from Dwayne Woodruff. Gets very close to the first down, but they'll have to kick it away. Fourth down, and Mike Saxon will be kicking to Rick Woods. Kick, Charlie. Fair kick, taken at the 44. And returns to Dallas territory. So when we come back, the Steelers will go to work at the Pittsburgh 49 yard line, a punt of only 38 yards. As we come back to the action, you see Tony Dungy relaying messages down to his defense on the sideline. We mentioned that he's the defensive man matching with, with Tom Landry for the offense. Steelers at the Dallas 49, no score. Stallworth and lips wide to the near side. The pitch is to Abercrombie. And he'll pick up around eight yards, maybe nine on the play. Now let's check the scoreboard. 
Cincinnati 14, the Giants nothing. That's an upset working. Tampa Bay, <laughs> that's another upset working. And Houston 3, Cleveland. This can be upset someday. Certainly could. There's Mark Malone. Now, he's one of the two quarterbacks in the NFL, the other being a Raider quarterback, Mark Wilson right now, who calls his own play. The defense is called by Ernie Stotner. You saw him briefly on the sideline for Dallas. Second down and two. Oh, nice running. Nice running by Abercrombie. Ernie Stotner, you notice that he's dressed in a different color shirt than any of the other Dallas coaches. That's so that you can pick him out on the sideline. He'll signal the defense is in to his defensive linebacker. That's uh, Eugene Lockhart will be calling him. You saw him just a little movement of the hands. Doesn't need to say much. Lockhart knows what he's supposed to call. You see Landry talking to Ernie Stotner. Stotner, by the way, 15 years with the Pittsburgh Steelers as a defensive tackle. He's a Hall of Famer. Abercrombie has picked up 24 yards in five carries. He comes out, Ehrenberg replaces him, and Ehrenberg goes in motion. And Malone goes deep. Stalwart is there. Can he get it? No, he's overthrown by a step. Another problem. He was going from shadow to sunlight and is looking back. Sometimes hard to pick up the ball in the stadium. This is a particularly difficult stadium for a receiver to pick out a ball when it's coming high out of the top. You see him in the shadow here. Now watch him as he cuts to the outside. He bursts into the bright sunlight. I don't think he could have caught that football anyway. But he was open. He'd broken away from Ron Fellows, number 27. And that's, I'm sure, a distressing sign to Landry. Landry concerned about making sure that they're covering on those man-to-man -man coverages of the deep receivers. Second down and 10 at the Dallas 37-yard line. No score in the game as we're winding down the first quarter. Malone keeps both backs in the block. Stallworth this time pulls it in at the 29-yard line. He'll pick up eight, so it'll be third down and a couple as we come to the close of the first quarter. One is in the book. Three to go. Bill Bates with the last tackle. We have no score between the Steelers and the Cowboys. AT&T, the right choice. Dan Vault's fourth touchdown pass ties the game with Miami. It's now third and ten at the Dolphins' 25. Should the Chargers stay with their strength and run a post pattern or fool the Dolphins and run a sweep, what would you do? We can help put people together. Hey, I got an idea. For us at American Express, building one worldwide nerve center was a dream come true. Finding the communications and information systems that could grow with us might have been a nightmare. We chose AT&T. You don't trust your dream to just anyone. Whether it's telephones, information systems, long-distance services, or computers. The right AT&T. What did you decide? The Chargers sent Buford McGee on a sweep. And his touchdown ended the Dolphins' win streak at 11. The San Diego Chargers made the right choice. We're back at Texas Stadium. This is Charlie Jones and Merlin Olsen. We alluded to it when Pittsburgh had the ball. They, they completed their first pass to a tight end this year to Biddy Cunningham. I'm really surprised that they haven't been able to go to the tight end. Charlie, they only had 11 passes. They're tight ends all of last year. But you know what that does for defense? That means that they can ignore your tight end and double cover all the other people. Look at that reception comparison between the Steelers and the Cowboys. The Cowboys have 31 passes to their tight ends. The Steelers, before this game, zero on the year. The Steelers, by the way, have always relied on their wide receivers. And look at that number there. 59 of their catches during this year have gone to the wide receivers. Lipson Stallworth primarily, although Ouija Thompson has a couple. And Lipson Stallworth is a bear. have the most receptions of any two, uh, any two wide receivers in the NFL. Oh, they certainly are impressive, Charlie. You know, I was talking, talking earlier to uh, Jerry Tufts, who coaches the linebackers for the uh, Dallas Cowboys, and he talked about those two. He said, you know, Stallworth is such a courageous receiver. He comes in, he'll catch anything. Doesn't care how you're going to hit him. And he said, Lips is amazing because of his great body control. One more note on the tight end for the Steelers. How would you like to be a tight end in college and be drafted by Pittsburgh? Oh, could be the end of a career. Get to death. <laughs> Third down and two. The Dallas 29-yard line. No score in the ballgame. Oh, good defensive play. And that is dropped for a lot. Eugene Lockhart. The hitting machine. Well, Eugene was on top, but it was Mike Heckman that got the first hit, Charlie. And you'll see Heckman blitzing in from the outside. Watch him go right underneath the block. Look at him right there. He made the first hit. Lockhart wraps him up. 
Nice play. And the third man in on the tackle, 54, Randy White. But watch the hit right there. Good penetration. One, two, three. Dexter Klinkscale, excuse me, the third man in on that tackle. And Gary Anderson out of the hole is Scott Campbell, a 49-yard attempt. And it is good. From 49 yards away, and the Steelers move on top by a score of 3 to nothing, with 14-20 left to go in the second quarter. Today's game is brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks. The more you look, the more you like Mazda value. By Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this. And by Midas. For mufflers, brakes, and shocks, trust the Midas touch. 14 minutes and 20 seconds. That is the time remaining in the first half. Gary Anderson for the Steelers just converting a 49-yard field goal, kicking off either to LeVette or to Williams. And this is with John Williams on the return. Williams to the 30 return near the 35-yard line. 30 yards on the return. And Harvey Clayton makes the tackle. You don't make that kind of return without good blocking up front. There was the Dallas wedge. LeVette out in front of him to be a personal blocker there. But most of that is just good elusive power running by John Williams number 38 the Cowboys got him out of the USFL he's played a lot of football over the last couple of years but they think he's perhaps the power back of the future here in Dallas Dorsett four carries has rushed for only two yards thus far little play action fake tight end Cosby over the middle 43 yard line gain of nine second down and one Charlie, that's a perfect illustration of how the Cowboys have utilized their tight end so effectively. Cosby, a fine receiver. They even keep him in on extra long yardage situations because he's so dependable. And within this Cowboys system, it's an amazing system in the sense that even a guy without incredible athletic skills, and Cosby is a good athlete, but not, not on a class with some of the other guys on the field, you can really be boosted by the system here in Dallas. Second down and one. Here's Dorsett, and may have a yard. He's ridden down by Brian Hinkle. He needed a yard for the first down. That's about the total that he'll get. It'll be close to the first down. This Pittsburgh defense extremely aggressive. You saw them coming across on that last play. Let's check the scoreboard. Well, Washington now has taken the lead. 10-3 over Detroit. They're still in the first quarter. Minnesota and Green Bay, no score as they move to the second period. Philadelphia 3, St. Louis nothing in the first quarter. 39-yard field goal by McFadden in that ball game. Upset Sunday is well underway. Eugene, the hitting machine, Lockhart. He, he earned that name, didn't he, Charlie? Yes, he did. He earned it in high school. And uh, the reason he earned it in high school, in one high school game, he knocked out seven opponents, knocked them out. Two of them said at halftime their bell was rung five, did not want to come back to the <laughs> ball game. <laughs> he grew up in Crockett, Texas, named for Davy Crockett. It is said that Davy camped there on his way to the Alamo. Well, he's camped on a few people today, let me tell you. He is a hitter. Just learning this Dallas system, though, takes time. Third down and about a half a yard to go. Three tight ends. John Williams just leaning near the 45. David Little at the defensive surge, and he'll have the first down. The Dallas Cowboys love to use those tight end coming back into the middle of the line. Now, Brian Solanon, number 89, is going to come from the right side of your picture. Watch him now as he drifts into the picture. He'll actually become a trapping lineman. You'll see him right there, ducking up inside a wedge. There you see him. Well, <laughs> we can find him. Solanon, number 89, going up in behind Cooper and Kurt Peterson to help pave the way for that first down. Dorsett running into problems again. And this time it's Robin Cole that shuts him down. The Steelers do not want him to pick up the 31 yards and reach the 10,000-yard mark in a game against their defense. Charlie, I talked to Tony Dungy, and he said there's no question our first priority of the day is to stop Tony Dorsett. We want to force them to throw the football. They're not worried about him breaking a record. They're not even worried about the yards he gets, but obviously that priority has helped them to stop him so far in this game. 
another sidebar. Dorsett has never in his career rushed for 100 yards or more against the Steeler defense. And here's Danny White. the great ones down all day they stopped him on the ground but they did not stop him in the air 56 yards on this completion over the top of David Little number 50 and Tony Dorsett is in the end zone and here he goes again if he can't do it one way he'll do it another 66 yards on the drive in five plays and set the end to add the point after. And it is good. And the Dallas Cowboys have taken the lead 7-3 to three in the ballgame. Danny White has completed 7-7 seven of seven for 102 yards. He's having a perfect afternoon. In addition, that was only Dorsett's second touchdown of the season and his first receiver. Well, if they don't hurt you one way, they hurt you another. And Zepzian will be kicking off. And this will go for a touchback out of the side of the end zone. We'll bring it out to the 20-yard line, and the Steelers will go to work trailing 7-3. to three. Zepzian kicking with power, but Charlie, you mentioned his shoulder. He dove for a pass in practice the other day and injured his shoulder. I think maybe that would have an impact on the accuracy of your kicking because you use the arms as you swing into those kicks hasn't hurt his power as he nailed that one out of the end zone. But on the field goal attempt that he had earlier in the ballgame for 47 yards away, he pulled it wide to the left side. He may be trying to compensate for the pain in the right shoulder as Merlin talked about. Steelers first down to the 20-yard line. Abercrombie and Pollard are the running back. Pollard goes in motion. The pitch is to Abercrombie. And he has five yards to the 25. It'll be second and five as Randy White makes the tackle. One of the toughest jobs for the offensive lineman is to try and cut off. Well, watch Mike Webster here. He's trying to reach out and cut off Randy White on this play. Now, White is going to watch the snap of the ball. He's driving outside. Webster going at his heels. But look at White. Doesn't even slow him down. Outside quickly in pursuit. And he's the man that makes the tap up tackle on Abercrombie. Second and five at the 25. Interesting note. Walter Abercrombie, the leading rusher for the Steelers, is from Waco, and he went to Baylor. For the Cowboys, their leading rusher, of course, is Tony Dorsett, and he was raised in the suburb of Pittsburgh. Well, you know, when Dorsett was holding out this year, at one time he said he was considering asking for a trade, and one of the teams he would like to have been traded to was the uh, black and gold of Pittsburgh. He said that would have been like going home. Does, doesn't he know that you cannot go home again? <laughs> We've got a timeout. And the Cowboys have the lead, 7-3. to three. We'll be back in just a moment. Steelers ball of their own 25-yard line. Pittsburgh trailing Dallas, 7-3. to three. Second quarter, Malone with time over the middle. Pass is complete to Stallworth. Stallworth to the 35, has a gain of 10. And picks up the first down, Eugene Lockhart and Ron Fellows with the tackle. If you want to go to one sure-handed receiver, Chuck Noll will point right now to number 82, John Stallworth who just continues to perform at a very fine level. And he is fearless going inside, Charlie. When you stretch out like that, knowing you're going to get hit, you've got to have a lot of courage. Check of the scoreboard. Denver 6, Indianapolis nothing. Rams and Tampa Bay tied 7-7. Seven, seven. And Green Bay leading Minnesota 7 and nothing. And here is Dallas 7, Pittsburgh 3. Steelers have the ball at their own 35. We've got just under 10 minutes to go in the first half as Frank Pollard carries to the 39-yard line. Gain of four, so it'll be second down and six. Eugene Lockhart was the first man there for the defense. Now we mentioned earlier that the Steelers bench is in the sun. You see that fan blowing to try and cool these players down. Temperature going up now as the sun beating down on the artificial turf. I think before the end of this day, the Steelers are going to be a lot hotter than the Cowboys. They've got the sun to contend with. The temperature in the 80s, the humidity in the 80s, Chance of rain in the area tonight is 
second back through is Abercrombie, and a flag is down on the blood. Jim Jeffco making the tackle, and we've got a lot of baseball coming your way. You've been watching the league championship series. Well, game five, the Toronto Blue Jays and the Kansas City Royals at 4.30 Eastern time today. Of course, Toronto with a 3-1 lead in that. And so the Royals, with the cliche, their backs to the wall. The Dodgers and the Cardinals. The Dodgers lead 2-1 in that series. And that will be on at 8 o'clock tonight Eastern time. Dick Enberg uh, out uh, helping to lead into those ball games. To give the folks a little taste of uh, baseball fever as we uh, go in toward the conclusion of those championship series, Charlie. An excellent telecast, too. It's really been fun to watch. Second and one, 49 yard line. Wilder just juggled it on the handoff for a moment. Has the ball and the first down at the 46. The Steelers have been rather predictable on their first downs, Charlie. They've run five times, only passed once so far. Philadelphia six and St. Louis nothing. That score just in. And here it is, Dallas 7, Pittsburgh 3, a 56-yard touchdown pass from Danny White to Tony Dorsett. And for the Steelers, Gary Anderson with a 49-yard field goal. That's been the scoring, and we have just under eight and a half minutes to go second quarter. Malone back to throw. And he goes deep. Stallworth is there. He throws over the wrong shoulder. Stallworth was looking over his left shoulder. The pass came over his right shoulder. Malone is kind of waving to him downfield, saying, it's my fault. You were there. Don't, come on back. It's all right. It was my fault. We mentioned earlier the outstanding tandem to wide receivers. Stallworth and Lips, number one in the NFL. The second-ranked tandem, Hill and Renfro. And Hill has certainly caught the most passes, but in the past few weeks, Renfro has become a much more important asset and tool for Tom Landry. But here in Pittsburgh's uh, side of the field, the two you want to go to, Lips right there, number 83, and we've talked a great deal already about number 82, Stallworth. Calvin Sweeney is in, so Stallworth can grab a, a breath of this warm air today. Malone has completed three of six. Too tall came across. Was he pulled off? I think he was. It looked like Terry Long, number 74, jumped up early. Start, 74 off there. Second down. Talking about 74, Terry Long, only 5'11", maybe the smallest offensive lineman in the league. You see him getting up early there, and of course that's an automatic penalty. Now, just outside of him, Tanji Oaken, is, you saw him briefly there in your picture. He's only 6'3". They're playing against Dutton and Jones at 6'8 and 6'9". These guys, they said, we're going to go out and get down quick so they can't see how small we are. Second down and 15. Here's the draw, Abercrombie. There. Randy White, right in the middle of your picture, is up as a linebacker on that play, but it's Victor Scott, 22, at Kevin Brooks, 99, and Bill Bates. Boy, they got everybody up on that one to knock him down. But we saw Randy White briefly there as a linebacker on that play. That's something the Cowboys are doing to try and cross up people this year. The rushing defense of the Cowboys is you much can improved. See. Much, much improved this year. Third down and 15. Pollard to the 49 yard line. That's a gain of eight, so it'll be fourth down and seven. And you might say at home, why are they running in that kind of situation? Well, one of the things that the Steelers don't want to do is turn the ball over. They're second best in the NFL at doing that. And so Harry Newsom will come into bunt for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Leon Gonzalez is set for the return. He hangs this one up. Good hang time. Fair Fair catch. Catch. Call for and taken. 4.3 seconds to hang time. We'll be back in just a moment. United Way salutes Spitzberg and one of its leading citizens. For more than 50 years, Art Rooney has guided his beloved Pittsburgh Steelers. He helped build the foundations of professional football and set a standard of quality that has made the NFL unparalleled in professional sports. 
His calm, selfless counsel saw his team through the tough early years to the Steelers' first Super Bowl victory in 1975. The Steelers are the only NFL team to win. Dallas first down, their own 12-yard line. Here's Dorsett. Has a yard to the 13, so it'll be second down and nine. Robin Cole with the tackle. Dorsett trying to stretch that defense as he sprinted to the outside and then just cutting back inside. Robin Cole for many years an outside linebacker. Moved inside last year as Lambert retired and made the Pro Bowl. Many feel that had he been on the inside all these years would have gained a lot more recognition. But I'll tell you, he is a great linebacker, great athletic talent, and really a powerful force on the inside. Second and nine, Dallas leading seven to three, moving on the six-minute mark. Time remaining first half. Side is complete to Tony Hill. And Hill has the first down at the 24-yard line, a gain of 11. Tony Hill finds himself in Landry's doghouse every now and again. An outspoken player. Doesn't always run the patterns exactly as they're planned, but you can't fault him here. A fine catch, and look how quickly he got those toes down. Just a little bit of artistry there as he gets the first down. And Brian Hinkle was the Steeler chasing him. First down, Dallas at their own 24-yard line. Here's Dorsett. He's in trouble. Puts the tackle. Puts another one. Looks at Barry Weather. Gets around him. He got away from Woodruff. Unbelievable just to get where he got. That's for an update, let's go to Bill McAtee in NFL 85. All right, Charlie, Denver has scored against the Colts. Here's the play that set it up. John Elway to Clint Sampson. The play covers 45 yards. The ball goes down to the one. Sammy Winder takes it in from there, but the extra point was missed. 6 nothing, Blanco. Charlie, you may never see a greater run to be marked as a one-yard gain. I think Dorsett uh, did everything a great back can do on that play. You're right, he did. Second down. And here's Dorsett. Cut down at the 25-yard line, so he'll lose a yard. Let's go back and look at that previous play, because I think it shows you the great quality of Tony Dorsett as a back. He is trapped in the backfield by number 31, Donnie Shell on the blitz. Look at that. Has to get drowned to get away. Gets away from Robin Cole. Pulling away with his power. And then that little quick move right there to pull Dwayne Woodruff, number 49, in. And then gets away from another tackle. I mean, that's, that's amazing. Back at the 24-yard line. So it's third down and 10. And Danny White in the shotgun. And too Mike. much time. I think there's too much time. There's all kinds of little things that have been bothering him. He certainly has, Charlie. Early in the year, he had separated ribs, separated rib cartilage. He then got a sprained ankle. Uh, he got a pulled muscle in his calf. He sprained his right wrist and his right thumb. I mean, you got to talk about travail. Danny White had to say, why? Hey, why me? Missed a couple of games right at the end of the preseason. But has managed to come back, and through all of that, has really put together a pretty good season. He's had a tendency to, to make some mistakes under real pressure, but there aren't many quarterbacks who don't do that. Key play right here. Third down and 50. If the Cowboys don't pick up any kind of yardage here, that means, of course, they'll be kicking. The Steelers will have good field position. The pressure, and he goes down at the 15-yard line. A loss of five. Second sack of the day for Keith Willis, number 93. John Goodman also in there to get pressure on him. And the Steelers getting fine pressure out of that three-man rush. And so it sets up the return of Lewis Lips. Now the punt return man for the Steelers, and he can well give Pittsburgh excellent field position. Oh, he's scary. Oh, yeah. Every time he touches the football, if you're a Dallas Cowboy, you've got to tighten up a little bit and cringe. This back pedal, 30-yard line, 35, 40, to the 43-yard line, 13 yards on the return, but a punt 
of 55 yards by Mike Saxon, and Victor Scott makes the tackle going downfield. Let's watch Lips on that last reception. Watch how he, he'll have a tendency to pick his eyes up, watch the kick. Now, in this case, because the kick was so deep, his concentration mostly on the ball. I don't even think he bothered to look at the rush because he knows when he's backing up, he's going to have time to deal with the rush after the fact. Usually, when he's standing, you'll see him look up at the ball and look back at the field. Oh, that is not good news. Dwayne Woodruff, one of the things that this Pittsburgh Steeler team does is to employ a lot of their first line players on special teams. And that's the starting left cornerback of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he's having a fine year. Let's see if we can see how he was injured on that last play. He'll be on the right-hand side of your screen. He's trying to block right there for Lips, and it looks like Lips comes up over the top. One, oh, that's Billy Bates that came in while he was trying to block, hit by two players in the back, and went to the ground. We'll keep an eye on him, Charlie. And we'll take a timeout to score Dallas 7 in Pittsburgh 3. We have four minutes and nine seconds, first half. Dwayne Woodruff being assisted from the field of combat. Not only the cornerback specialties, but a busy man off of the field as well. He attends law school four nights a week. Quite a man. That's trainer Ralph Berlin on his left with the glasses on that met him as he came off the field. And that's got to be a concern for these Pittsburgh Steelers. Cincinnati, they, they are turning their season around. 21-0 over the Giants in the second quarter. Houston leading Cleveland 6 0 in the second quarter. And Washington 17, Detroit 3 in the second period. Well, that's good news and bad news for these Dallas fans. As I'm sure we would have heard a big roar if they'd have seen that uh, score against the Giants, but maybe a boo for that score, a winning score by uh, Washington, or at least they're leading anyway. First down, Steelers, their own 43 yard line. Pittsburgh trail 7 3. A little play action to open it up. Wanted to go deep, holds it short to Abercrombie, and Abercrombie goes down. At the 49-yard line, gain of six, second down and four. Dislocated elbow is the report on Dwayne Woodrow. That is a serious injury. That's, uh, we would hope that that's one that can be worked on immediately. They'll put ice on that, but uh, I doubt very much we'll see him again during the day today. And let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Channel 4 in San Antonio, KMOL-TV. This is Charlie Jones, Merlin Olsen. Malone going deep, Lewis left. Incomplete. Double coverage on left. Mark Malone started with a bang this season. He had six touchdowns, five by passing and one by running in the opening game against the Colts. But he has been off the mark on his deep passes today, Charlie. He's had several receivers open, but has not been able to get the ball to them. Touchdown passes, Mark Malone and John Elway tied with the most coming into this game, and Dan Marino was 48 last year, tied for eighth with eight. Third down and four. Cowboys lead it 7-3. 3.55 left to go second quarter. Underneath the coverage, takes it at the 45, first down. Everson Walls with a tackle. Charlie, what the Cowboys are trying to do on that play, they're, they're trying to isolate Randy White one-on-one. -on -one. Now watch them, they cover the center here, they've got an offensive or defensive lineman outside, they know he's got a block out here, and that leaves Randy White one-on-one. -on -one. You'll also see the blitz from the outside on that last play, as the Cowboys were able to get great pressure right here on Malone. There's the blitz coming right there by Thurman, the cornerback, yes. coming from the outside. That's most unusual. First down. It is high. Oh, oh intercepted. Michael Downs, number 26, Woo. had his hands on the football. The Cowboys leading the league at 15 interceptions and a chance right there to up the total. Watch Downs timing it perfectly. This pass thrown on target, but Downs had read it beautifully. Watch it right here. Gets his hands on that football, and it's a good thing he did. Otherwise, that would have given the hands of Benny Cunningham, and he would have had his 
second reception and the second for the tight ends of Pittsburgh for the year. Second down and 10. Dallas 44 yard line. Malone throwing into a crowd is caught by Stallworth at the 33. Gain of 11 and a first down. Everson Walls and Dennis Thurman falling all over the receiver. Let's go into that defensive line and look at what they're trying to do to get pressure on Malone, the quarterback. Randy White going to drive outside. His end on this side, Jeff Jeffcoat, will slide underneath to swing to the inside. You'll get a chance to see them here. It's Randy White who eventually goes all the way around and gets in on Malone just as he unloads that football. But that's an excellent pass. Oh, Malone is in the ground. John Dutton with the sack. That is the first for the Cowboys. When you were playing, were there as many defensive games for the linemen as there are now? We ran all kinds of defensive stunts to try and break loose. On this last play, though, that Dutton just going one-on-one -on -one against Terry Long gets outside of him and then makes a good adjustment to Malone. Malone a little bit late stepping up, and that's one of the problems he's had as a quarterback, Charlie. He doesn't step up very well. Second down, 16. Yard line. Hezek. So it'll be third down and ten. Two minute warning will now be given to both benches as the number one draft choice, Kevin Brooks of the Cowboys, makes the last tackle. Uh, on the history of this matchup between these two teams in that free game, helps you to understand uh, the intensity of a game like this. Third down. Mark Malone on third and long, and Jeffcoat got his hands on that football and almost had a chance to intercept it as it fluttered to the ground. That, Charlie, that's a lineman's dream. You see one of those hanging there like that. 49-yard field goal attempt by Gary Anderson, and he has already converted from this distance in this ballgame. This one, he falls to the left side. Boy, he had enough power. I think that would have been good if it had been online from 69 yards. So the score remains Dallas 7 and Pittsburgh 3. And everybody had their eyes on that football as it cleared the line of scrimmage. You'll see the kick again, and you'll watch it hook off to the kicker's left and your right and goes all the way. Watch it. It goes all the way into the stand. All the way through the end zone. Well, we don't quite see it, but anyway, it ended up in the stand. Rick Woods has replaced Dwayne Woodruff at defensive left cornerback. Woodruff with a dislocated elbow. Dallas is a first down at their own 32-yard line. 151 to go first half. White has pressure, and he will be sacked for the second man. He stepped away from the first one, and then Gary Dunn got him. Third sack for the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's the first time that Rick Woods has been forced into action at cornerback. And in this series, in this uh, Pittsburgh defense, he's going to be bump and run, man to man. Now, that's a tough job. White with the screen. It is James Jones to the 31. With Timmy Newsom out of the lineup with that knee injury, they're going to what they've called the two-headed fullback. They're using James Jones, number 23, in passing situation, and John Williams, number 38, in the running situation. That time it was Jones's turn. Loss of a yard on the last play, so it is third down and 11. Traded for Mike 
Jack Renfro. They got a receiver that had been down, deemed expendable by the Houston Oilers. Well, I'll tell you, look at those hands and that concentration as he takes the ball down. We've got a timeout, and we'll be back in just a moment. Forty-two seconds, time remaining in the first half. On that last play, we'll give you one more look at it. And that ball thrown into traffic here by Danny White. But watch the way Renfro, who gets his hands on it first and then loses the football, has to go down and dig that football almost off his hip as he pulled it in. And I'll tell you, <laughs> Harvey Clayton standing there shaking his head, saying, hey, I don't believe that he got it and pulled it down. White, 10 for 10. 37 yards and one TD. Having a great day. And Dallas and Pittsburgh both have two timeouts remaining in the first half. Oh, almost intercepted. This was Brian Hinkle who went up with it for the Steelers. We mentioned the dominant linebacking of this Pittsburgh Steelers team. That was a just, just a good job of keying by Brian Hinkle. who has been having a fine year for the Pittsburgh Steelers. In fact, He's been overshadowed a little bit by Mike Merriweather. Merriweather, a more flamboyant player, but Hinkle's certainly having a great year. And you've got to believe that Raphael may believe he'll have a little chance here to, to stretch that Dallas lead. Second down and 10, 49 yard line. Let's follow this play from our end zone camera as White comes back to the camera. And he goes to Tony Dorsett and it's incomplete. Charlie, Tony Dorsett has quietly become the number four leading, number four and the leading receivers of this Dallas Cowboy team. And one of the things he wanted to do was to have a chance to get deep more often. And Tom Landry has given it to him here today. You saw him on the catch earlier, and I believe that's the same pattern again. That one's slightly overthrown, and we have a Dallas Cowboy down. Glenn Titanser, number 63, that's on the ground and being attended to by the Cowboys. And that's one of the problems the Cowboy offensive line suffered with so hard last year was injuries to their offensive linemen. They certainly had done a better job of keeping everybody healthy and protecting their quarterback and doing all the things that good offensive linemen do. But that, that might be a problem. That looked like a serious injury, Charlie. And don't forget that later today, the battle for the pennants continues on NBC Sports. Playoff fever begins at 4.30 Eastern time with Game 5 of the American League Championship Series between the Toronto Blue Jays and the Kansas City Royals. And the Blue Jays lead three games to one in that. And then tune in at 8 p.m. Eastern time for the League Championship Series at Inside Look. And Dick Enberg will be hosting that, followed by Game 4 of the National League Championship Series. And in that, the Dodgers lead the Cardinals two games to one. They'll be in Bush Stadium. The tradition is here. The memories are waiting on NBC Sports. And good news for Cowboy fans and those who follow Glenn Titanser. He is off of walking on his own. Broderick Thompson, number 67. One of those huge, tall, young offensive linemen. The Cowboys have three of them. Thompson and Crawford Kerr and Chris Schultz. And uh, they're taking Titanser all the way into the locker room. It's almost a half. He'll go in and they'll possibly give him some treatment before the half. But they've got the rookie, Broderick Thompson, in at right tack, or in at left guard on this particular series. Now. Third down and ten. The plays are all even. Each offense has run 28 plays to this point in the first half. Pittsburgh with a three-man defensive rush. They drop everybody back in the pattern. But that does not stop Mike Renfro. Big first down at the 32-yard line. A gain of 90. That's what Pittsburgh did to Dan Marino last week. They rushed three people and dropped eight. They gave Marino fits as they switched up their defenses. On this play, you'll see Renfro looking for that open space. Look how he just spotted the seam in that zone. They're working him short and long, getting help from Brian Hinkle inside. But Renfro, able to find some space in that zone defense, took the reception for a first down. And the Cowboys take a timeout to stop the clock with 23 seconds left to go in the second quarter. The report on Glenn Titanser is a bruised left knee. That is the preliminary report, and that, of course, means that he can't come back and play in the second half. Well, anytime you see them down checking the knees of those big offensive linemen, you worry. Those big fellows uh, take a lot of shots, and uh, I was glad to see him walking off the field, Charlie. Today's telecast presented by Authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience 
any rebroadcast or the use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Dallas Cowboys and the National Football League is prohibited. And don't forget, coming up at halftime, NFL 85 with all the scores and highlights of the other games around the National Football League and some of the early scores coming in. Maybe looking at another upset Sunday, but NFL 85 will give you that update. First and 10 at the Steeler 32-yard line. The Cowboys are right on the edge of Septian's range. Incomplete. Renfro, the intended receiver. It'll be second down and 10 at the 32-yard line. Harvey Clayton has the coverage. We've got 19 seconds left to go in the half. Landry calling Renfro's number more and more often as he has gained confidence. And one of the things that would scare me about this Dallas offense is their depth at the wide receiving position. After Tony Hill and Renfro, you go down to Poe and Gonzalez, two rookie wide receivers, not well-known, not highly drafted. And if you have one of these wide receivers going down, Charlie, Danny White's going to have a hard time picking out those wide targets. Renfro, two receptions for 37 yards. Had 100 yards against the Giants last week. His first 100-yard game receiving. Here is James Jones going out of bounds, stopping the clock. Good pick up the first down inside the 22-yard line. 14 seconds left to go in the half. The Steelers trying to mix those defenses. Rushing three, dropping eight. Rushing four and five, trying to mix them up to get Danny White confused. White got them confused on that play. James Jones slipped out of the backfield from that wing position, quickly got outside and picked up that first down before Brian Hinkle could get out there and run him out of bounds. First down at the 21-yard line. They've got the rookie Poe in there, Charlie, number 81. White going to the end zone to Renfro, he overthrows it. They're well within Septian's range now with nine seconds. They can run that same kind of a play one more time if they want to. They're not going to take the chance. I'm surprised. I'll let you try one more. Well, they're coming now. They don't want to take any chances. They're well within Septian's range. They don't want to hurry him. And we mentioned earlier that Septian had injured his shoulder in practice the other day. And it bothered him, I think, on his first kick, which was rather a long one. He missed it. Let's see what he does here. An attempt from 38 yards away. Septian missing from 47 earlier in the ballgame. He's got it. And the Cowboys stretch the lead. 10 to 3. One of the most important parts of a good field goal is the hold. Gary Hogeman, watch him take that football, spin the laces, and so important on a long kick that those laces be straight toward the goalpost. Hogeman gets it into the perfect position, clears his hand just in time. Beautiful timing and a beautifully executed field goal. You always hear the kickers talk about the other two men involved, the center and the holder, and they're right. And I'm not sure that the center and the holder always get their due. They certainly don't, Charlie. And it, you saw there how hard that job can be if the ball is not snapped properly. Certainly important to get that thing back to them. Tom Rafferty does the snapping on those kicks for the Dallas Cowboys. Five seconds left to go in the second quarter. So on that drive leading to the field goal, the Cowboys used a minute 46 with a minute 51 that they have. And Septian will be kicking off, and the deep back on the return is Rich Ehrenberg. And this is just a break of any kind of a rhythm that they might have on the return. Here's Sam Washington. And he will be dropped, stopped at the 30, and then pushed back as time runs out. Steve Diazzi of the special teams was the man downfield for the Dallas Cowboys. So we come to the end of the first half with Dallas out in front of Pittsburgh by a score of 10 to 3. Now the Steelers have won the last five meetings between these two teams, including a pair of Super Bowls, and that spreads over 12 years. Well, this game, Charlie, uh, in Dallas's favor certainly right now, but a good hard-hitting game, tremendous defensive game, and I think the whole difference in the game, the, the Pittsburgh Steelers able to control Dorsett on the ground, but Dallas went over the top. Let's go back and look at that touchdown play. They control Tony Dorsett as a running back, but here they're able to isolate him one-on-one -on, -one on little, number 50, and Dorsett's speed 
jumped too much. He said the fastest he's ever run is a 4-3, but he said, hey, I can run as fast as I can, as fast as I have to, to get away from those defenders. And NFL 85 halftime activities will continue in a moment. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Welcome those of you who have been watching Dallas, Pittsburgh, and Cleveland, and Houston, and we're going to get you caught up on scores from around the league in this week six. First of all, down in Dallas, the Texas Stadium, the Cowboys lead the Steelers by a score of 10 to 3. Great first half for Danny White, 10 for 10 at one point in the half. Tony Dorsett came in leading just 31 yards to become the sixth player in NFL history to get 10,000, but his main contribution has come as a receiver. Watch this. Dorsett splits the seam, beats the linebacker. This is the only touchdown so far. 10-3 Dallas after Rafael Sepien's field goal just before the half. Denver and Indianapolis, the Broncos lead it by a score of 6-3. to three. A couple of 3-2 and two clubs. The Broncos won a four 3-2 and two teams in the AFC West. There's Dan Reeves. He's watched his offense turn into the AFC's most potent. Here's how the touchdown was scored, the sequence anyway. Vance Johnson will return the ball 38 yards. A nice run up the sideline. He gets good blocking. Goes behind the wall. He goes to the 46-yard line. Then John Elway takes over. 45 yards to Clint Sampson on the right side there. That set up a two-yard touchdown run by Sammy Winder. 6-3 Denver after Raul Allegre's 28-yard field goal. The Giants in Cincinnati, this is a bit of a surprise. The Bengals lead it 21-3. It figured to be a big day for Phil Sims against the Bengals secondary, ranked last against the pass, but the Bengals have controlled this ball game. The Rams and Tampa Bay, the Buccaneers lead this by a score of 17-14. to 14. James Wilder has scored on a one-yard touchdown run. Eric Dickerson scored on a six-yard touchdown run for the Rams. Cleveland and Houston, the game that some of you have been watching. The Oilers lead this 6 to nothing. a couple of Tony's and Dejas field goals. It may have been costly for the Browns, however. They lost Eddie Johnson, their leading tackler. Bernie Kozar started today, but he was intercepted. Admittedly, this wasn't his fault. The pass deflected. It is intercepted, and the Oilers lead the ball game 6 to nothing. Buffalo and New England. The Bills, 3 to nothing over the Patriots. Tony Eason is out with an injury. Steve Grogan replaced him and fumbled on the first snap. Interceptions have been the story, although Joe Cribbs coming back. He wasn't in uniform, though. He worked out with the team before the game. Derek Burroughs, in his first pro start, will intercept Tony Easton to stop a drive in the end zone. And then Charles Rome's comes back and intercepts uh, another Easton pass. Easton has had interception problems all year, as has Vince Ferragamo. It is 3-0 Buffalo. Washington and Detroit. The Lions haven't won in Washington. Since 1937, a couple of touchdowns in the first half from John Riggins. He now has 100 in his career, second to Jim Brown, 17-3 to the score in Washington. At County Stadium in Milwaukee, Green Bay and Minnesota, all tied up at 7. Lynn Dickey has thrown a 5-yard touchdown pass to Jesse Clark. Tommy Kramer responded with a 14-yard touchdown pass to Mike Jones. Philadelphia and St. Louis, this is another surprise. The Eagles lead the game 13 to nothing. A couple of Paul McFadden field goals started the scoring. Neil O'Donohue missed a couple of field goals for the Cardinals. And now Maude Rashad, and I've got to ask you this. Tony Dorsett has only, I think, five yards on eight carries for the Cowboys in the first half. The Steelers' priority was to stop him. That's right, Billy. I talked to Tony Dungy uh, last week, and he said going into this game, the thing that you can't do is you can't concentrate on Dallas's pass. You've got to stop Tony Dorsett because as soon as the linebackers start to drop off, Tony Dorsett just picks you apart. They have stopped Tony Dorsett on the ground, but they forgot he's one of the best all-around ball carriers in the league, and he's catching balls, uh, I think he's over 80 yards in reception. Playing pretty conservatively. Does that surprise you? For the Cowboys? Yeah. Not too much. I think they're the type of team. They win however they can. Yeah, okay. Uh, by the way, earlier on our pregame show, Larry King uh, said that the Players Association will sign an agreement for drug testing in Major League Baseball. Donald Fair, the director of the Players Association, the executive director, denied the story a few moments ago, but he did confirm that there has been a proposal from the 26 clubs concerning drug testing, but that no plan is imminent. And we will return with more halftime activities after these words from our local station. After that concise update from NFL 85, we're back now in Dallas. And Merlin, let's go back to the beginning of the telecast 
when we set up the premise, it would be the running attacks of both ball clubs that, could, that the game would turn on. It hadn't worked that way in the first half. Well, Charlie, I think uh, we were talking about very obvious things. We said Tony Dorsett was the key for both teams. At first, because Dallas depends so heavily on Dorsett to set up their passing game as well as their running game. Second, because Pittsburgh set him out as their number one priority. They said, we've got to stop Dorsett's running. Well, they did a good job of stopping Dorsett's running. In fact, he's had a tough day running. But what he was able to do, as all great backs are able to do, he hurt him in another way. He simply broke away on a pass pattern, and they're trying to cover him man-to-man -man right here. That's David Little right there, number 50. Look how Dorsett just easily out dis distance him, and that's Donnie Shell, number 31. Now, Shell has a strong safety without great speed, unable to cover some ground and help in that situation, and Dorsett breezes into the end zone. That one play is the difference in this game so far. The Pittsburgh defense, ranked number two in the NFL, has done a good job other than that. In fact, on first downs, Dallas is only averaging one yard per carry. I mean, that's, that's tough. When you can keep a team to one yard a carry on first downs, they, that means they've got to throw the ball effectively. I'm amazed that White has been able to throw as effectively without the running game as he has today. All right, and effectively without the running game as he has today. All right, and let's, let's add one more note in case uh, some of our viewers joined us in the middle of the first half and did not realize that coming into the game that Tony Dorsett needs only, needed at that point, only 31 yards to reach the magic plateau of 10,000 yards rushing, and he would become only the sixth man in NFL history. There's a lot of pride on the Steeler defense. They don't want him to do it in this game. They say, you know, wait, let's let him do it next week. Well, I think they're more concerned with winning this football yes, game, Charlie. And, and right now in the locker room, I think both coaches won't really deter too much from the plans they laid out at the beginning of the game. I think both teams can basically do what they wanted to do at the start of this game. The one thing I would be concerned about if I were the Pittsburgh, uh, Pittsburgh Steelers is the injury to Dwayne Woodruff. Woodruff went down just before the half with uh, with a dislocated elbow, and that put into service Rick Woods, who's not played a heck of a lot at that uh, cornerbacking position, and that might be something that Dallas will try to exploit. In fact, he has never played it in a game before, only in practice, so it's kind of a, a band-aid that they've stuck on that corner over there. Now, coming into this game, the Steelers have won the last five meetings between these two teams, including two Super Bowls. Why does a team, a particular team like the Steelers, match up so well against another team? And how does that, how do the, the, the players, they just know that they're going to play well? Well, there's no easy answer to that, Charlie, except that certain teams just have a better feeling in their approach and in their preparation. The Steelers, for some reason, just have always played well against the Cowboys. And I don't know that that helps them tremendously today, but as Chuck Noll said, it sure doesn't hurt either. That's right. Now, when you were playing, was there a particular team that you that you felt that you just owned them? Uh, yes, we had that kind of relationship for a number of years with the San Francisco 49ers, oddly enough. And uh, the 49ers, at one point, would come to me when we were at the Pro Bowl, and they'd say, you have some inside information. You have some keys to our defense. And, of course, I'd say, well, yes, we do. <laughs> well, we didn't have anything, but we were able to give them some fits on the field. So. Right. Let's look at the official statistics in the first half of this ball game between the Dallas Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Charlie, that first statistic I want you to look at is 17 yards rushing for the Cowboys. Now, ordinarily, when they can't run the ball effectively, it has a much greater impact on their passing yardage, but they've still been able to come up today with 148 yards of passing. White has been hot, 10 for 10 in the first half. He has really been smoking. Uh, other than that, pretty even, or excuse me, he went from 10 to 10 at one point to 12 from six, 12 to 16. I'm, I'm getting back into the half a little bit. Turnovers are fairly even. Robert Levatt on the return, and he brings it from a yard deep out to the 25-yard line, so he'll have 26 yards on the return. And the Dallas offense will go to work as Calvin Sweeney makes the stop for the Pittsburgh Steelers. In the Central Division, in today's action, and coming in, you know, Cleveland was on top of the 3-2 record. Well, Cleveland is trailing at halftime by 7. Pittsburgh's trailing by halftime. Cincinnati with a 1-4. They're up by 18 points in the second quarter. And Houston is up by 6 points. To give you an idea of those of you that are following the Steelers of what is happening in their division. So Dallas goes to work on their own 25-yard line as we open the second half. White takes a lot of time. He comes out throwing just as he did in the first half. He goes to Tony Hill, and he'll pick up a quick six yards. Now, those of you who follow the Dallas Cowboys, this will give you an idea. Dallas, with a 4-1 record, are up by seven at the half. 
The Giants with a 3-2 record trail by 18. St. Louis at the half trailing by 13. So that's good news for Cowboy fans. Washington, they're trying to make it 3-3. And they're up by 14 and a half. And Philadelphia 1-4. They're up by 13. So there's a little good news and bad news right now for Cowboy fans. The best news of all is that they lead in this game by a score of 10-3 over the Steelers. That's the only one they can control, Charlie. Intercepted by Pittsburgh. David Little has the interception. Steelers have the ball at the Cowboy 39-yard line. And that is Little's first interception of the season. And after, a first turnover. After being beaten earlier for the touchdown by Dorsett, it's got to feel good for Little to be able to go and snag that football out of the air. Watch him jump here. Goes up and gets it with one hand and pulls it back down. Beautiful play. Danny White going after Doug Cosby, a big tight end. And boy, you see the reaction there. He was mad that he missed him. The ball at the Cowboy 40-yard line. Steelers first down. And here is Abercrombie, or was that Baller? That was Abercrombie. Abercrombie into the middle of the line. And Charlie, this is one of the places that you can see a difference in this Pittsburgh team. Under Terry Bradshaw, very often, under in that kind of situation with a turnover, he went instantly for the big play. But the Steelers have become more conservative, and I think it's a, it's really done because of the, the inexperience of Mark Malone. Mark Malone can make those plays, and in time, perhaps, will be more aggressive as a signal-calling quarterback. Dutton and Lockhart with the last tackle. Malone to throw. Sets up deep. Fires. And it is incomplete. A one-hopper to Lewis left. For a moment, Pollard thought it might be coming to me, and then he remembered that Pollard was behind him in the pattern, but it's incomplete. Third down and seven. The report on Dwayne Woodruff, that dislocated el elbow, well, he'll be out six to eight weeks. That is not good news for these Steelers. That means they're going to have to reshuffle that defensive backfield. That's not even good news, no, it's, and certainly better news than saying you're out for the season. But that, uh, that does hurt. He's been very consistent this year. And consider for the Steelers to be their best cornerback. Third down and seven. Incomplete and a flag is down. Flag dropped at the 18-yard line. So we're kind of in a small holding pattern to wait and see what happens. Pass interference against the offense, against the Steelers. Interesting, do you take it here because you can take them completely out of field goal range or do you figure they're out of field goal range now? Well, let's look and see if we can spot the interference here. Lipton Stallworth working in tandem on the right-hand side. There's the call right there. Stallworth pushing off, pushes the defender away. Everson Walls, number 24, and Everson is entitled to that territory down there. The official alertly spotted it. And, Charlie, there's the answer to your question. Uh, they're going to disregard the penalty, force the fourth down, force the punt, and take the football. The Cowboys do not feel, and justifiably so, that Anderson can go from this distance. It would be a 55-yarder. And that is his career longest, and so Newsom goes for the right corner. And he gets it. Let's see where they'll mark it out. Boy, he's done a good job of kicking today. Out at the 10-yard line. So the Steelers unable to capitalize on David Little's interception. Newsom has been inconsistent coming in, but he has kicked well today. It's 27 yards, but it's out at the 10-yard line. Dallas leading Pittsburgh by a score of 10 to 3. Cowboys have the football on their own 10-yard line. And here is Dorsett. To the 10, the 15, the 20. And out of bounds at the 29-yard line. that the Pittsburgh Steelers have controlled Dorsett in the first half, but they don't control him here as they get the little toss outside. They led the cornerback, Rick Woods, inside on that play, and Dorsett simply explodes outside, uses his speed to pick up big yardage. 19 Dorsett yards on that play, Charlie. And needs nine to reach the milestone. First down, 29-yard line. The Cowboys, in addition, have some breathing room. Cosby in motion. A little play action fake. And watch it all alone. It's there at the 50-yard line. Cosby, the tight end. 
Rick Woods with the tackle. A gain of 21 yards. You talked about the brain trust of these teams earlier in the first half. Well, when the Cowboys started here in 1960, it was Tom Landry and just a few of his friends. He had only three assistant coaches, Brad Eckman, Tom Dom, and Babe Demancia. Well, things have changed a little, Charlie. On that sideline today, there are 11 coaches, some of them up in the booth, but 11 assistant coaches with Landry, and then he's got... Uh, He's got another secret weapon. He's got the old field goal kicker, Ben Angajanian, as his guru of kicking. Dorsett. It'll be one yard. So he needs eight. Charlie, look, 49. Charlie, looking back on that play, it was an excellent job of faking by Danny White, and I think that's kind of a lost start in the NFL. Quarterbacks don't hide that football very often as well as they should. Well, White had everybody faked out on that play. Had plenty of time to stand and watch the secondary. And it looked like Tony Hill was wide open. But White already had his eye on Doug Cosby and waited for Doug to clear before he dropped in the football. The report on Glenn Titan, sir, the offensive guy for the Cowboys. It's a knee problem. He could play and he might not play. So that's still up in the air. Here's White to throw. It's there. And it'll be a first down. A gain of nine yards, and that's all that Mike Renfro needed. Donnie Shell stole that football from Renfro there. He was angry they didn't give it to him. It looks like we're going to have that a mark off against the Cowboys. I missed the penalty, Charlie. I did, too. It's a five-yard markoff. Let's go look at the end of that play and see what happened as Donnie Shell came up with the football. Well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Second down and 14. At the Dallas 46. Here's Dorsett. three yards to the 49 so he needs five yards to reach the 10,000 mark and Mike Merriweather makes the tackle sneaking up on that mark of course starting as they did with their backs to the wall the Cowboys able to to be a little more aggressive with their defensive call but Landry has never been afraid to call a big play. in fact uh, both these coaches like to have a few tricks up their sleeves uh, for example against Cleveland a few weeks ago Landry called the play where James Jones took the football and threw back to the quarterback Danny White out of this shotgun formation or spread formation third and 11 and just tripped up that is the four sack Keith Gary gets this one Keith Gary had come all the way around behind one on one on Chris Schultz and Danny White didn't see him Gary was actually laying on the ground just reached out with a long arm and tripped Danny White. Watch it now. Keith Willis coming in from this side. And that's Gary getting pushed to the ground. He's all the way on the ground. Watch him just reach out right there with a left hand and trip Danny White. Danny didn't see him. Loss of 11, so it's fourth and 22. Good high kick. Fair catch. Rick Woods lets it bounce. And he'll be dead at the 12-yard line. He might have rolled a couple of more turns. We've got a timeout to score Dallas 10. Pittsburgh 3, 10 and a half minutes to go, third quarter. But it looked like Victor Scott may have interfered with the catch by Rick Woods. And then he makes a dumb mistake, catches that ball. I think it would have rolled, Charlie. First down for the Steelers on their own 13-yard line. Dallas leads 10-3. Play action. Malone over the middle. He's open. It's Abercrombie to the 40-yard line. 27 yards in the first down. Michael Downs with the tackle. Both teams taking advantage of one-on-one -on -one coverage on a running back. We saw Dorsett take it for a touchdown. In this situation, it's Abercrombie. Good play action fake. And then right over the top from Malone. Watch Abercrombie. Isolated. He'll blow right through on the on the one-on-one -on -one situation. Eugene Lockhart trying to catch up. And he skied, but he could not help. The two safeties, Clint Scalen Downs, over to put him down. 
That is Abercrombie's second catch of the ball game and also his second of the season there was jumping in the offensive line. The left side of the Pittsburgh offensive line up a little early. And again, the official's microphone appears to be hooked into the public PA, but not into our set. So we're not getting those calls, Charlie. That was on Ray Penny. We picked that up, though. Penny, a valuable addition to that offensive line, came back after tours in the USFL. You know, he's played the equivalent of about five seasons in the last three years. Yes. He's wow. got to be getting tired. Third quarter, and another third quarter, Cleveland by one over Houston, 7-6. And here is Dallas Den, Pittsburgh three. Malone has a man up. Stallworth was open. And he couldn't get it to him. Now let's go to NFL 85 and Bill McAtee. All right, Charlie, you just mentioned the scores. The Browns have struck early in the third quarter against Houston. Bernie Kosar has thrown his first NFL touchdown to Clarence Weathers. The play covers 68 yards. It is 7-6 now, Cleveland. I thank you, Bill, and of course that continues to tie in with the Steelers here as they trail by seven. Aaron Berg will be dropped for a loss. And so all of a sudden, the Cowboy defense is beginning to take over the ball game. Uh, Charlie, the Cowboys love to blitz you on defense, and that's a feast and famine kind of approach. It's been mostly feast for the Cowboys this year. Good job by Michael Downs just a play ago coming in to knock down the pass on the blitz on that last situation. A very conservative call by Pittsburgh as they ran in a passing situation. Didn't fool anybody and they were shut down. Third down and 18. Eight minutes, 55 seconds. That is the time remaining in the third quarter. Steelers with the ball. They trail by 7-10-3. And now Malone wants a timeout. Second time we've seen Malone take a timeout because of confusion, and those are costly. You get to the end of a ball game. This ball game's still very tight. They might need that timeout. Well, we start the day with football, but if you've been with NBC over the last few days, you, of course, know that we're moving on to our baseball coverage from here later today. The battle for the pennants continues on NBC Sports. Playoff fever beginning at 4.30 Eastern time with Game 5 of the American League Championship Series between the Toronto Blue Jays and the Kansas City Royals. And, of course, the Toronto Blue Jays lead in that three games to one. Later on this evening, it will be at 8 p.m. the League Championship Series and Inside Look, hosted by Dick Enberg, followed by Game 4 of the National League Championship Series, matching the Dodgers and the St. Louis Cardinals live from Bush Stadium, and the Dodgers lead that series two games to one. The tradition is here. The memories are waiting for you on NBC Sports. This is Charlie Jones and Merlin Olson with eight minutes and 49 seconds left to go in the third quarter. The Dallas Cowboys out in front of the Pittsburgh Steelers by a score of 10 to 3. Steve Landry on the sideline talking to a couple of the linebackers. Mike Hegman, 58, Eugene Lockhart, 26. And interesting to me, Charlie, the Cowboys moved their huddle out of the sunshine over <laughs> onto the side over there. I, I'm that sure it's really knowledge? getting hot. Yeah, you bet it is. Landry, I'm sure, asking about that long connection to Abercrombie when the linebackers failed to pick him up coming out of the backfield. The Cowboy defense has held Lewis Lift, who has six touchdowns that is second in the NFL to Darrell Turner's seven of Seattle and Hill Lift to zero reception to the ballgame. That's good defense. Oh, yeah. Third down and 18. Going from the shadow to the sunlight. There's pressure, and the overthrow, and it's incomplete. Short hop. The Cowboys have come repeatedly today with the cornerback. When the, re when the Steelers have put two wide receivers to one side or the other, frequently Dennis Thurman has lined up on that inside receiver and has come in to blitz with no one to pick him up. So Harry Newsom averaging 39.8 yards will be kicking to Leon Gonzalez. Now Gonzalez may have trouble picking this ball up. It'll coming, be coming right out of the sun. He's got it at the 17. And it's thrown down. Mike Merriweather, the linebacker, is there. 
And Dallas will have the football when we get back. A 50-yard punt for Harry Newsom. It's one of his secrets, and I'll tell you, he is a great running back. First down, and he drops this one. <laughs> well, Charlie, he didn't see that one coming. <laughs> That's right, he didn't. Let's go back and take a quick look at that punt that was caught by Gonzalez. Charlie, you said he would have trouble picking it out of the sky. Watch him as he almost drops this punt. It hit him on his shoulder. He's lucky to get that football. And then watch the tackle by Mike Merriweather, a Steeler first stringer, starter, playing on special teams, almost take Gonzalez's head off, and I think should have had a face mask penalty on that play. Second down and 10 at the 17-yard line. Cosby, the tight end, edges in. And John Williams just for a little power move inside and has three yards to the 20. It'll be third down and seven. I'm I'm not, I'm kind of confused by the play calling of the Cowboys. They open up throwing and then they, they come on, you know, second and 10 and they run inside without... Uh, well, I think they're I, I trying to what guess... They're, what are they trying to do? They're trying to guess with the Pittsburgh defense, uh, Charlie. They're, you know, they're an obvious passing situation and uh, they try and get a quick shot up the middle hoping they'd catch the Steelers perhaps in a blitzing uh, situation and pop a big one. Third down and seven. Dorsett stays in as a blocker, makes a nice block and the pass is complete. Tight end Doug Cosby. But the man who set it up was Dorsett with his blocking ability, giving Danny White time enough to throw. Good running back has to do more things than just run the football. Dorsett has caught the football today effectively. Now picking up the blitz from the outside by Merriweather. Literally saving enough time for Danny White to spot Doug Cosby downfield and get that big first down. at the 35. He'll have two. It'll be second down and eight. Donnie Shell was there to deck him. Charlie, we were informed that Danny White has bruised those ribs again. We talked about his skein of injuries early in the year. And the first injury he had was separated rib cartilage. He's that was in preseason. Right? Yes, in preseason. Been sacked, what, four times today? So he's been bounced on pretty good. And apparently one of those sacks loosened up those ribs a little bit. He's in some pain, but he's obviously still in the ballgame. an illustrious group of National Football League running backs. 19 yards for the record. Speed to pick up that big game and a handful of NFL records. And those are the men that he joins. Three, including Norset, still playing Walter Baton, Jim Brown, Franco Harris, O.J. Simpson, John Riggins, and now Tony Dorsett. The Steeler 45 yard line first down. Dallas leading 10 3, 6 6 speed. Left to go in the third. Cosby in motion. White to Cosby. Bad ribs and all. White continues to throw. And he deals to the 35. Danny White has had a very good day today. He's been right on target. That kind of timing pattern, something you work on long hours in practice. Cosby just hitting a certain point on the field, and that ball waiting for him as he turned around. Cosby, as I mentioned earlier, very dependable, good hands, smart receiver, knows how to get to the open area. A 
Look how open he is, too. <laughs> he got he got a place where there was all kinds of room, Charlie. And he led the team in receptions last year when he pulled in 60. John Williams. And it's a first down for Dallas. Charlie, right now, if you're on that Steelers side of the line of scrimmage or if you're Tony Dungy watching from up here in the Steelers uh, coaching box, you're thinking one thing. We've got to keep them out of our end zone. We've got to try and get that football away from them. At least force them to kick the ball. Try and get them a, to attempt the field goal rather than let them down in for the touchdown. And the Cowboys have had trouble kicking that ball in from the 20 this year. And this is James Jones. He goes out at the 30, so he picks up only a couple. It'll be second down at eight. And Donnie Shell is the man who was chasing him as we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. You're watching KMOL TV, Channel 4 in San Antonio. This is Charlie Jones along with Merlin Olson, Texas Stadium, a sellout crowd to score Dallas 10 and Pittsburgh 3 with just under five and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Cowboys with the ball. Second down and seven at now the 29-yard line of the Steelers. The officials mark the ball. And Tony Dorsett has reached the milestone of 10,000 yards rushing. And here he comes again. Left side. Cuts back. Slips the tackle. Inside the 22. Close to the first down. Eric Williams is there to stop him along with Keith Willis. So in the first half, the Steelers were able to slow Dorsett on the ground. He caught the pass for the 56-yard touchdown. But now he's beginning to work loose. I think Dorsett is so impressive in a situation like that, Charlie, because earlier you'd seen him make that little dip and go outside. He makes the little dip here and goes back inside. A little misdirection play. Now look, he looks like he's starting outside, but watch him as he cuts back against the grain and then just powers through that tackle by David Little. Powers through a second tackle right there by Donnie Shell to make excellent, Eric Williams, 21, to make excellent yardage. And it's third down and a yard to go for the first down. And here's Dorsett. Oh, and he leans. This will be close. Into the arms of John Goodman. Charlie, I'd indicated... Oh, me, that was James Jones. Go I'd ahead. indicated a moment ago that the Cowboys have had trouble punching the ball in when they get inside the 20-yard line. They've had, they've had the ball inside the 20 24 times during the season. They've only got 10 TDs, 6 field goals. They've turned the ball over 4 times, and 5 penalties have kept them from scoring. Fourth down and, you know, a yard a little under, and they're going to go for the field goal attempt. Do you agree well, with this call? I'll tell you, that's a, it's a percentage call, but I think I'd punch with that big offensive line. Forty-yard attempt, maybe just under it. And it's good. Rafael Septien has it from 38. And it's hit now officially from 39. And so the Cowboys have stretched it out by 10. It's Dallas 13 and Pittsburgh 3. We'll be back with a kickoff in just for the Steelers. As Septien kicks off. And it's picked off by Ehrenberg at the one-yard line. And he has hit at the 20. Bounces off of the tackle. Returns it to the 26-yard line. And it will be David Woodley, a quarterback, Merlin. Charlie, it's strange. I had a chance to talk to him in the locker room just before the game, and, and I said, I know it's tough for you sitting. He said, you know, I may not be sitting as long as you think. I, either he had a premonition or Noel had talked to him, but I know that, that Malone has had trouble moving the team. Started brilliantly in that opening game against the Colts, and has kind of slowed down. Has not been able to make it happen the last few weeks. Well, Chuck Noel is going to give David Woodley a chance. Woodley started in the first seven games last year, hurt in the eighth game, had a leg injury that kept him out the rest of the year. The Steelers down by 10, 13 to 3. And here's Abercrombie. Oh! He is upended at the 28, comes down at the 29. A gain of three, it'll be second down in Chevin. And he was upended by Everson Wall. Let's go in and take a look at uh, our new quarterback, David Woodley. A little fake to the inside, tosses it out. But the thing to watch out here is the head over heels roll by Abercrombie. And boy, that has to hurt your legs to get whacked like that. Amazing the kind of strength and flexibility these guys have. Second and seven. 
showing the blitz. And they get the call. They forced the audible, and now they're dropping out. Well, and they don't take too much time. The Cowboys, very simply, taking advantage of the fact that they know Woodley has not been in there for a while. They know he's a little rusty. They came up. They came up and made it look like a blitz, Charlie. They got everybody up on the line. Woodley was forced to call the audible. Took a little too much time. They dropped out. They weren't going to run the blitz. But by that time, it, the time clock had run out. 30-second clock had run out. They get the penalty. So it's second and 12. The ball moves back to the 24. Steelers only have one first down in this third quarter to five for the Cowboys. The Cowboys very dominant in this third quarter. Abercrombie in motion. Stallworth, the intended receiver. It is incomplete. Good coverage by Wall. So it'll be third down 12. Cowboys moving both cornerbacks over. Everson Wall soloing up on number 82, Stallworth. That ball a little bit late being delivered by David Woodley. And look at this, Merlin. Ooh. Wow. Third quarter. Well, I'm sure that's that game tightening up a little bit. Yes, and, and interesting to both to both Cowboy fans and Steeler fans. Third down and 12. Here we have two minutes and 19 seconds left to go in the third. Cowboys by 10. David Woodley throws. It is low. It is incomplete. He was going to Stallworth again, and again it was Everson Walls with the coverage. Almost the same pattern. Solo coverage. And Everson Walls without brilliant speed it's not as fast as some of the defensive backs on the field but just has a great knack for closing that cushion receivers call that a cushion when they've got room and and walls just closed the cushion got his hand on that football twice in a row makes big plays and here's the kick to leon gonzalez Takes it at the 37, and have two, maybe three yards on the return. The Cowboys will have the football. A 39-yard kick with a three-yard return, and Daryl Nelson was there for the Steelers. Take a peek quickly at the eyes of Gonzalez, and again, remember, he's looking up into that sun. Let's see if he ever took a peek upfield. No, he did not ever take a look upfield to see where the uh, defenders were coming from. That's one thing that a good punt return man almost has to do. Look away from that ball momentarily. Gonzalez, I think, concentrating on that football, most importantly, did not want to drop the apple. Dallas from their own 40-yard line, first down. Danny White steps away from Merrither. The pass is complete. He goes to tight end Cosby, and Eric Williams makes the tackle. Danny White doing a good job of eluding pressure on that play. Merriweather blitzing from the outside, got in on him, but he just drifted to the right. And I'll tell you, White is almost a master at finding room in that pocket. He doesn't like to run that much, but he knows how to take a couple of steps to find enough room and enough time to get the football off. All of that, just a yard to the 41, so it's second down and nine. Dorsett. And out of bounds at the 45, a gain of four. It'll be third down and five. Donnie Shell was there for the defense. Let's go in and look. I mentioned earlier in the game the signature of this Pittsburgh defense, and it's the alignment of that nose tackle. Look how he's cocked on an angle here. Mean Joe Green for many years made that a trademark in the NFL. And look at him here. Charlie, we talked about getting to his left. That's one of the weaknesses when you line up that way and you see Gary Dunn trying to move out to his left-hand side. Actually did a good job, but he's at a disadvantage. And now the Steelers making some defensive changes, but not in time, and so they have to take a timeout. And let's check the scoreboard while we have this timeout. As Inkle says, it wasn't Inkle. Tampa Bay by three over the Rams as upset Sunday continues, and Green Bay by seven over Minnesota. That game in the third quarter. And don't forget, next week, it'll be the Raiders against Cleveland, San Diego at Minnesota, Cincinnati at Houston, Indianapolis at Buffalo, uh, NFL doubleheader on NBC, and Dick will be returning from the wars of baseball to join Merlin in Mile High Stadium 
Seattle against Denver that most of the country will see. And I hope that the weather is better than the last oh, time you were there. You froze. Oh. Tell everybody what you oh. did. It was so cold. I went out to Denver and I looked at the I looked at papers. They said it's going to be 55 degrees. Well, we got there and it just plummeted and we had a blizzard. Had eight inches of snow on the field before the game. And I had to send someone out to buy a couple of big electric blankets. We didn't have any coats. And you turned it up high. Too, you know, right? Charlie, when they said don't leave home without it, they meant the long underwear. And the I know. And the electric blankets, too. Dallas 13 at Pittsburgh 3. Three field goals and a 56-yard touchdown pass from White to Dorsett that came with 11.27 left to go in the first half. And a big plays have all been made for the defense with that one exception. One big exception. And, of course, uh, that exception proving to be bigger and bigger as the game goes on. And right now, you've got to believe that the, the Pittsburgh defense has got to get a little more aggressive. That aggressiveness is in their nature anyway. But they've got to try and force a turnover here, try and make a big play. The offense has not been effective today. Neither quarterback, and we better give Woodley a chance. He's only had one series, but able to get anything going against the Cowboy defense. And now the Steelers have only one timeout remaining in the game. They're down five for the 45. Here's Renfro in motion. Renfro over the middle. And it is... Whoa, oh, boy. It's intercepted. As Renfro came across underneath the coverage, it was tipped, and then Eric Williams was diving for the interception. They're really excited about the play of Eric Williams, number 21, had interceptions in both of the last two ball games. This one bounces off Hinkle's hand up high and almost made it. That's the tip drill. Eric Williams diving, could not get it into his hands, but that's the turnover that these dealers would love to get. And so Mike Saxon will be kicking to Lois Lips. And Lips, as you can see, is in shadow, so he will not have a problem fielding the ball. Oh, great hang time. Fair catch is called for and taken at the 10 yard line. Hang time exactly five seconds. Boy, that's the coach's dream there. All kinds of room to cover. Saxon doing his job beautifully. A 44 yard kick. Here's another look, Marlon. Looking into the eyes of the kicker, and he really got his foot into that. Most importantly in that situation, getting it up high enough. And right there, Louis Lipp had to make the fair catch call. It was not deep enough to let it go to the end zone. He ends up pulling it in. The ball is spotted just outside of the 10. And there's a lot of green between that Pittsburgh offense and the Cowboy goal line. First down, Steelers on their own 11-yard line. David Woodley, the quarterback, in his second series. He sets it very quickly, throws high for Lips, and it is incomplete. Lewis Lips has been shut out thus far. He still does not have a reception. Dexter Clinkscale was there for the defense. It's second down and 10 at the Steeler 11-yard line. Almost all day long, he's been battling head-to-head -head with Everson Walls. Everson uh, would certainly appear to be getting the better of that battle at this moment. David Woodley, one of only two Steelers who have ever played for another NFL team. The other is Ray Snell. Woodley, of course, with Miami. Youngest starter in the history of the Super Bowl at 24 in the game against Washington. Interceptor. Eugene Lockhart, touchdown. You saw Lockhart start from that middle linebacking position. He read the face off by Woodley. Gets out in front of Benny Cunningham, the tight end. And he celebrates in the end zone. Woodley just did not see Lockhart cutting across. He fired that ball, fired it very hard to Benny Cunningham. But shortcut by the defense. And Dallas has a touchdown. And the extra point is good. By Raphael set the end. The Cowboys now have stretched it out 20 to 3. We were talking with Eugene yesterday, and I said, Do you prefer that people call you Eugene or that they call you Gene? And he said, Well, I don't care. Either one is fine by me. And so I went to the old standby and said, What does your mother call you? And he said, Junior. 
Well, there was no help at all. They won't be calling him Junior on the sideline as he got the congratulations of his team. And Charlie, I think that's the result of some rust. David Woodley has not had a chance to play for a long time. And I don't care how much you practice. You can't really get the feel of a game until you're in the game. And that is his first NFL touchdown. Eugene Lockhart. And he runs it in from 19 yards away. And the Cowboys stretch it out. They lead by 17, 20 to 3. 50 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Septian will be kicking off, and Rich Ehrenberg is the deep back on the return as we try and stare into the thoughts of David Woodley. The Steelers have lost two in a row, and right now on their way to losing three in a row. Here's Ehrenberg on the return to the 20 and near the 30-yard line. So at least the Steelers have a little bit of field position. Not a lot, but just a little. And 27 yards on the kickoff return. Dennis Thurman makes the tackle, and don't forget that later today, the Battle of the Venice continues on NBC Sports. Playoff fever begins at 4.30 Eastern time with Game 5 of the American League Series between the Toronto Blue Jays and the Royals. Toronto leads that 3-1, and later on this evening, the Dodgers and the Cardinals, and the Dodgers lead that series two games to one. Pittsburgh from their own 30-yard line, first down. to the 37, so it'll be second down and three as Ron Fellows makes the tackle. Watch the play here of the middle of the line. Randy White, number 54, kind of guy that likes to run around those blocks. Watch him right here. Going to run around that block, get to the outside, and they're just zipping up the middle with Pollard. There was no way for Randy to, to get back in and make that play with his quickness. Good start for Pittsburgh on this offensive period. Second and three. Pollard and slips the first tackle but is nailed by the second linebacker and guess who? It's the hitting machine Eugene Lockhart. You can now call him the touchdown score. And with that play the gun sounds that is the end of the third quarter with the score. Cowboys 20, Pittsburgh 3. We'll be back into these messages from your local station. This is one of the six names on the ring of honor at Texas Stadium. Bob Lilly but you had a chance to play with him in uh, in one postseason game. What was it like to play with him? Well, I tell you, we played against each other so often. And Lily was a tackle in some ways very much like Randy White. They call it an explode tackle, or at least that's what the competition talks about it. There's no question that Lily was one of the most pleasant teammates I ever had. He made my job easy. And our, our styles really complemented each other, Charlie. No question about it. I enjoyed just sliding in behind him. He, re he caused a lot of trouble for the, uh, the offensive team. Third down and one. And the Cowboy defense is there, stopping Rich Ehrenberg. They'll lose yardage, and they'll be facing fourth down. to lose two. And it'll be fourth down, and they'll be kicking two tall with there. Along with Quinkscale. Yeah, you begin to mount up in the domination here as the Cowboys able to have nine first downs in this second half. Only one for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And boy, you can't do much when you can't move the ball. They've not been able to move it on the ground. They have not been able to move it in the air. Good kick. Wow. Gonzalez at the 13-yard line. with the fumble recovery. A 51-yard kick, and now the Steelers can get back in it. Let's take a peek. We showed you earlier, Gonzalez back there, not too certain of that job as a punt returner, but that helmet right on the football. That's number, what, 92 or 93? One of the Garys, one of the Keats. Keith Gary, Keith Gary. <laughs> Edwards, anyway, the man who popped onto that football. And that is a big turnover inside the 20-yard line. The Steelers now with a chance to get themselves back into this game. At the Dallas 17, first down.
Woodley, the quarterback. Abercrombie and Ball Tommy. Split. Incomplete. There is a flag. Abercrombie cut down field before the snap. Lockhart for the defense. Down at the line of scrimmage, the Cowboys just trying to overload against the Steelers. You see the call being made, motion by the backfield. But let's go look at that play. Look at what they've done in the middle. They've got the two linemen going outside, but here is Michael Downs and Eugene Lockhart, and they'll just go through like that. You've only got one man to block them, and they're going to make it awfully tough. You Lockhart right there. It's Pollard trying to pick him up, but he just sidestepped Pollard. And poor David Woodley with no time to get that football. That's just overload, simply overload. And the only way to beat it is to get that ball up in the air early and have a receiver who can run underneath it. Aaron Berg and Steve Morris are the two running backs. So you look for the pass, and here it is, right into coverage. Dips and then finally knocked away by Cunningham. The intended receiver just trying to protect himself from the defender, Michael Down. Well, very often a receiver has to become a defensive back. That's exactly what Benny Cunningham does here. That ball should not have been thrown. Double covered. It's gunned right into the mouth of the defense. And once that ball bounced in the air, Cunningham had the least of the three opportunities to get it. He stripped it out of the hands of Victor Scott, 22. Did a good job of making sure that one wasn't intercepted. Chuck Knoll on the sideline. Woodley now has completed zero. 0 for 6, one interception. Third down and 10. Lipsy's drop just got it away. Bill Bates was coming. He got there almost before the football. And Pollard couldn't hang on to it. Boy, he was off like a shot. Billy Bates right here at the bottom of your screen. And again, it's the overload situation. Both safeties up. Both safeties coming. There's just no chance in there as they overload and put a safety, Billy Bates, right on top of David Woodley. Woodley got the ball off. I don't know how he did it. I don't either. Almost got a check uh, catch from Baller there. And now they're going to have to go for the three, Charlie. From 34 yards away, Gary Anderson out of the hole of Scott Campbell. It is good. So Anderson now has hit twice. And the score, the Dallas Cowboys 20 and the Steelers 6. Anderson to kick off for the Steelers with Robert Levette and John Williams, the two deep backs on the return. And this is Williams at the 7-yard line to the 15. Has an opening at the 20 and returns near the 30-yard line. John Williams. Played his collegiate ball at Wisconsin, and he was in the USFL for a couple of years. Dave Edwards is the man who stopped him. Todd Spencer was there for the Steelers. Danny White coming onto the field. Certainly he's had an outstanding day. A little confusion there as Dallas had 12 people on the field. Robert Levette on back to the sideline. Now, wait a minute. Better not overload out there. We're doing too well with 11. And a chance to give you a look at all of the early ball games today. Dorset and leading the way is Broderick Thompson. Six yards to the 35. It'll be second down and four. Robin Cole makes the tackle. You get an idea of how deep Dorset sets in that I formation from the Cowboys. We asked him about that before the game, Charlie, and he said, he said, you know, I tried playing up closer, but he said I I, I would get there so quick that the hole wouldn't have a chance to open. So he said I backed out of there. It gives me a chance to read the blocks a little bit better and I can control the play a little bit better from that eye formation. We'll see, they usually shift just before the count. They may go back into that eye formation here. No, nope. gonna pass. And it's there to Renfro. 12 yards, first down. Harvey Clayton is the seater they're picking on. When you're hot, you're hot. Danny White again to Renfro, and Renfro, Renfro, as we have mentioned earlier, a control receiver. Beautiful patterns, great hands. He's the kind of guy you can depend on to get that yardage for you down the sideline. Look how pretty that is. Beautiful pass by Danny White, and a very comfortable reception by Renfro. During halftime, I was in the press uh, the press room, and 
overheard a man talking about Renfro when he played in high school. He said his son played with him. He said, was he fast then? He said, no, he never was fast. He just always got open. Yeah. He has that fast, back. Fast enough, Charlie. That's right. Fast enough. Here's Jones. James Jones on the receiving end. What a day Danny White is having. 19 for 26, 229 yards. Well, he certainly, uh, certainly has it rolling today. A gain of four on the last play to the Steeler 49 is second down and six. Cowboys lead it 20 to six with 12 and a half minutes left to go in the ball game. Five seconds on the 30 second clock. White swings into the right flat and the pass is complete to Jones. He'll have a couple of yards to the 47, so it'll be third down and four. Charlie, if you look at White's statistics on the season so far, with today's numbers programmed in, he has eight touchdowns and nine interceptions. Not a good ratio of touchdown to interception. He'd like to have, well, at least a comfortable uh, advantage on the touchdown side. But White has thrown a couple of those interceptions in desperation situations and has been forced into a couple of bad passes. He's made mostly all good decisions today. Third down. And this is an overthrow. So it'll be fourth down and the kicking team will come in. Very quiet in this stadium all of a sudden. And it's just uh, people kind of waiting for something to happen, I suppose. Maybe the heat has something to do with it. They're, they're down there fanning themselves right now in the stands. Well, we have a quiet moment. I have just a chance. Lee Trevino called during half time watching the game here. Now. He wanted us to, to make sure that everybody understands. He's not retiring. Super Max, he can't no, retire. No, he's too strong. He's not retiring. He's going to play the regular tour, and then when he's 50, which is all years from now, he'll move right into the senior tour. <laughs> <laughs> not too far away. Tom Mike Jackson will be kicking. Tom Landry's not going to retire either, is he? No, no, no need to. No, no need to. Trying to block it. They don't get him. Bear catch is called for and taken at the 15-yard line by Rick Woods. So the Steelers will have the ball on their own 15-yard line, a 31-yard kick, but after the hang time. We'll be back, and just Cowboys lead it by 14, 20 to 6. At the helm of the Steelers is David Woodley. Woodley replacing Mike Malone. He couldn't generate any offense, and Woodley has had an unbelievably slow start. He finally makes his first completion. This is to Abercrombie. So Woodley now has completed one out of eight, and he suffered an interception. Right now, the Dallas Cowboys will present against the long pass. They'll give you some underneath. They were able to pick up some yardage on that play with an excellent block at the end of that run by uh, Benny Cunningham. Do you like a prevent-type defense? I hate the prevent defenses, Charlie. I'm, I'm glad I asked. A lot of times I had the feeling they prevented us from winning. You know, you put that three-man line in there, and Cowboys, you notice, still have the four-man line. They rarely go to the three-man. Second down, about a half a yard. There's the first down. Pollard picks it up. And Pollard comes out of the stack with the whistle that sounded. It'll be a first down. Let's check the scoreboard. Denver leading Indianapolis 15 to 3. That's in the fourth quarter. Cincinnati by 15 in front of the Giants. Tampa Bay and the Rams. Look at that. Tampa Bay by three. Tampa Ooh. Bay trying to knock off the undefeated Rams. Leaving only Chicago. First down. Heavy rule incomplete. Interesting call. That's a tough call on the sideline. As Calvin Sweeney went up, Fellows took him out. Now the official who's standing on that sideline had to decide if Sweeney's feet would have come down inside had he not been bumped. His decision was that Sweeney was already going out of bounds and that the, con the contact was incidental on that play brings up a second and long. Fourth quarter, Cleveland 21 and Houston 6. And that, of course, is important for Pittsburgh. Playing in the same division. Second down and 10. Woodley going deep. He's there. Sweeney! To the 20, 10, two-yard line. Ron Fellow saves the touchdown. 
several things to watch on this play. A 69-yard touchdown to Calvin Sweeney, but the Cowboys were hit with a quick count. I think they wanted to get a blitzing thing going here. Sweeney blitzes out of there on his own very quickly and watch them as they hit the Cowboys with a quick count. There's no rush, consequently. Calvin Sweeney just running it up will blow right by the cornerback there. He gets deep, and the ball is perfectly thrown, and Woodley's first pass completion is a big one. First down, goal to go, two-yard line. Quick correction, that is his second completion. His well, his first in this ago. game. <laughs> no, he had one to ever come. Ah, that's right. right down here. Oh! It was first down and goal to go from the two. Pollard is met by two tall Joe. That's right, Charlie. Threw that little swing out to Abercrombie, didn't he? Yeah. But, boy, there's not much success on that play. Too tall just powering from the inside. And Pollard, who is a bull of a back, was just driven back. They lost yardage on that play. They marked it back just barely inside the two-yard line. Too tall at 6'9", 287 pounds. The give is inside, and there's nothing there. Abercrombie may have a yard, but that is all. It'll be third down and goal to go. No sending a play in with Weezy Thompson, number 87. He'll help in this kind of situation. He took the play in. He may indeed be the receiver as well. Two times they tried the right side of that line. They're using leverage on that side. Short the offensive lineman against Dutton and Jones, but they didn't get in there. And Jones and Randy White pinched him down. Third down, goal to go. Abercrombie jumped. There was nobody there. He came down and then jumped into the end zone. They're all looking for the pass. And Chuck Knoll crossed him up. Made it look like he was willing to go to the passing game. He called the third consecutive run, went back to the left side, and they were able to get it into the end zone. Very, very nice call. Some good, philosoph some good philosophizing and play calling by Noel. An 85-yard drive. The big play, the pass to Sweeney. The flag is down. 85-yard drive in six plays, a 69-yard pass from David Woodley to Calvin Sweeney. That's what set it up. And now we'll check out the flag. Looks like it's going to be against Dallas and would be a set down. Dallas penalty will be administered on the kickoff. The point was good. Yeah, we'll let the official tell us. Right. This way. So the score is now Dallas 20 and Pittsburgh 13 with a lot of time. Eight minutes and 15 seconds. Steelers are running of the telecast. You said that Walter Abercrombie had to have a good day rush. It's been a pretty good day, 43 yards. The touchdown, his first of the game, only his second of the season. Well, they have not had the kind of day they wanted to with that rushing game, though, Charlie. They're back in it. They're only seven behind. Well, no question about that. Let's go back and look at those two play, or that play from two different angles. The first you'll see is from the sideline. Watch the surge. Offensive and defensive lines, and then Abercrombie up over the top. Actually jumps twice. Let's turn around now, climb into that end zone, and watch it close up. Webster getting over there to help along with Wolfley. They rolled Randy White up on that play. Diossi coming from the linebacking position. Got a piece of Abercrombie, but not until it was too late. They went right at the Cowboys' strength. They went right at Randy White and punched it into the end zone. Dallas now from their own 20. Danny White, 22 of 30, 239 yards. A touchdown and an interception. The touchdown was in the first half, and that was to Tony Dorsett. Renfro showing motion. They open up with play action, coming out firing. And it is there at the 41-yard line. Tony Hill, big play for the Cowboys, 21 yards. They're picking on Rick Woods. You said yes. they'd go after him. I knew they would. Anytime you put a guy into the ball game who has not played at a particular position or who has not played there in a long while, you're going to come right back and test him. That's exactly what they're doing here. Rick Woods in for the injured Dwayne Woodruff. He's getting some help on the play, but not there soon enough. They had to bump him out of bounds after a big first down. The Cowboys, I thought the Cowboys might resort to the running game, try and eat that clock. I did they're too. still up on top. 
Hill, four receptions, 51 yards. Little swing to Dorsett, and he scrambles to the 43. He picks up a couple, second down and eight, and David Little up into them. Now let's go to Bill McAtee for an NFL 85 update. Charlie, about 150 miles away from you, the Browns have come roaring back in the second half against Houston. Cleveland has scored again. Bernie Kozar has settled in. Here's the play that set up the latest touchdown. Kozar to Clarence Weathers. Weathers covers 57 yards to set up Ernest Biner's touchdown run. There's the score. Thank you, Bill. And there's the score here. Dallas 20. Steelers 13. The Cowboys have the ball at their own 43. Second and eight. And White is back to throw. Has pressure. They were setting up a screen, a middle screen, and did, did Dorsett lose the ball? Uh, something went wrong. Watch Dorsett. We're in isolation on him on that last play. Now he'll just fake like he's coming up to block. He's play acting here, just waking. You see the blockers in front of him? And that play, I think, just had too much heat on it. I don't think he was ready for it. But it's an easy pass to catch for a guy like Tony Dorsett. He's caught tougher balls today. That would have been a good gainer, I think, Charlie. In the fourth quarter, Indianapolis closing a little on Denver, and New England leading Buffalo in the fourth period, 14-3. to three. Third down and eight. Big play for the Steelers defense. It will not be enough yardage. Oh, my. Tom Landry will not be pleased with that. James Jones, the primary rule. You've got to get down to where you can pick up that first down, and you see Landry... He's seen. They've had to play. They had a connection. James Jones is hurt. He's on the ground. He needed eight. He got only about six. It's going to be fourth down and a couple, and that means that the Cowboys will be kicking to the Steelers. We have a final score just in, and here it is. Washington 24 and Detroit 3. Detroit with that big upset earlier of the Cowboys, not able to turn the Redskins around as Joe Gibbs apparently has his Redskins back on track of this. They have surely gotten themselves in the hole in the early going, Charlie. So Washington is now 3-3 in the Eastern Division of the NFC. Importantly, right here, the Steelers' defense will give the offense another chance at the football. Noel is giving last-minute instructions to Woodley, and this whole team had to be lifted by that big play and that touchdown. They now know they're one play away from tying this game up. And Detroit's record also is 3-3, just to kind of finish up our housekeeping. And here's the kick. Oh, good kick. Yep. He'll stay away from it. Oh, they got a break there. They, they got a break was there. there. Victor Scott Whoa. was down to try and down the ball inside the five, but when it hit, it, it did a direct left third. We'll be back in just a moment. Woodley completing two of ten, the big one, the 69-yarder to Calvin Sweeney, not too long ago that set up the touchdown. This one is off in the left flat, and it is complete to Abercrombie, and he has the first down at the 31-yard line, a gain of 11 on the play. Good job of pass protection on that play. Now, all of a sudden, as we'll take another look, Woodley looks like a different quarterback than he did the first couple well, of series. I think he's settling in out there, but look how well he's protected on that play. Too tall Jones finally breaking loose from the block by Ton Chilkin, but he had all kinds of time to stretch those Dallas defenders deep and then throw under to Abercrombie. He has Ouija Thompson and Calvin Sweeney as his wide receivers, possibly because this is who he's been throwing to in practice as the back of quarterback. And they're blitz. Here they come. Eugene Lockhart just missed that tackle, Charlie. He was blitzing on the inside. He got in there nicely and went right by Abercrombie. I think your point is a good one, Charlie. Uh, he may be trying to those guys, but the other thing they're doing is rotating those receivers because of the heat. Because of the heat. Randy White with that last tackle. Steelers, in the heat in Miami last week, everybody played with the exception of David Woodley. They rotated everybody, and the third quarterback held for field goal attempts at extra points. And Woodley's already playing today, so they may get everybody in the game today. It is in the 80s, and the humidity is there also. Second and 10. Woodley has time, goes deep, Cunningham! Cunningham looked like he was running in molasses. He was very slow once he got in the open. Charlie, the one problem I'm sure he's going to have, being on the injured reserve and having been hurt, he's probably not yet in condition. Uh, condition. 
and he does look slow and reacting here. He turned himself around, and I think he misjudged that ball a little as well. I think uh, had he been able to, to keep going without spinning around, that ball would have been on target to him and well thrown. Again, Woodley had all kinds of time to throw the football. Yeah. That's a very good sign for Pittsburgh. And now Stallworth is in, Lewis Lips is in, and Calvin Sweeney is in. They are the three wide receivers. Five minutes, 47 seconds. That is the time Lips. remaining. Intercepted. Michael Downs with the interception. Second time today, David Woodley has thrown one to the guys in the wrong colored shirt. And I gotta believe again, Charlie, that's the result of Rutt. Michael Downs, 26, left side of your screen, right, or Dennis Thurman, 32, and it's Michael Downs coming up from downfield to intercept that pass. Sweeney trying to get to that football. They hung it up for him, but they didn't get there in time as Michael Downs just stripped that ball away. That's another cornerback blitz, Charlie. Cowboys have killed them with that today. 10 yards on the interception return. 35-yard line of Dallas. First down, and here's Tony Dorsett. And Dorsett all the way back. Danny White is the blocker out in front. Hits to the corner. He's got it. about Tony Dorsett being the key to this ball game for the Dallas Cowboys and also the number one priority for the Pittsburgh defense. He showed you right there as he turned a broken play and a possible loss into a touchdown. And remember we said earlier that Dorsett has never rushed for 100 yards or more against the Steeler defense. Extra point is good. That makes it 27 to 13. Well, Dorsett still has it, but he's getting closer. He's within three. He's got 97 yards. 97 yards. Let's look at that run. Dorsett out to his right. He's going to be trapped there. Excellent pursuit by the Pittsburgh defense. They were out there waiting for him. Now, this is the mark of the extraordinary back. He'll go all the way back against the grain and watch him set up a non-block, a near block, right there by Danny White. Danny White didn't have to block Clayton on that play because Dorsett put Clayton in a position where he couldn't do anything. That's the kind of talent that Dorsett has as a running back, and you can do that if you have 4-3 speed, Charlie. Or as he says, just fast enough to the get get to it. And since NBC will be in Seoul, Korea for the 1988 Olympic Games, it seems only fitting that we put a clock on it. It took 11 <laughs> seconds. 11 flat to cover the 35 yards. Well, he's down, in, he's down in the sunshine, too. It's a hot one. Right. Well, Noel trying to reassure David Woodley now. Tell him to forget about that interception. Put it out of his mind. The only place you can do something with is the place coming up, not the ones behind you. And set the end kicking off. Again, a perfect kick. Just bounces in the end zone, goes out of the side edge of the end zone. We'll bring it out to the 20-yard line of the touchback. will send Woodley in with a play, perhaps a couple of plays, tell him how he wants to start the series. And I've got to believe we'll be putting plays in as he substitutes receivers and different people into the game. But Woodley will still be making a lot of calls on his own. Five minutes and 22 seconds. That is the time remaining here. This is Charlie Jones, Merlin Olson, 522 left to go. It's Dallas 27, Pittsburgh 13. As Tony Dorsett just scored from 35 yards out, he has scored twice, once receiving, once rushing, and in the ball game has reached the milestone more than 10,000 yards rushing, joining five other NFL grades. And now the Steelers go to work for their own 20. Will he pass to Stallworth? Is not there. He had one foot in and one foot out. They'll bring it back to the 20 yard line. Everson Walls was there for the Cowboys. There's a final Cleveland. 21 and Houston set.
Tom Landry in the shade along the far sideline. The Dallas Cowboys, their record, if they hold this lead, will go to five and one, and the Steelers, their record will go to two and four. And Pittsburgh will have lost three in a row. But still 5-16 left to go. They need another big play. Incomplete. Lips, the intended receiver. Lips does not have a reception of the ball game. First time in his career, now his career is last year and this year, that he does not have a reception. He was number one draft choice a year ago. Steelers have been able to dodge that three in a row scheme. They haven't lost three in a row since 1983. Well, it's not too far back. They didn't want to do it here. They wanted to get climb back, get a piece of that lead in their division if they could. And Cleveland winning. They knew that they were going to play head to head with Cleveland in a few weeks. They could maybe even that score. But well, things not looking good here for the Steelers. Woodley with pressure, he gets it off, it is incomplete. Number one draft pick for these Dallas Cowboys, number 99, Kevin Brooks, in on that play. They like him as a pass rusher. He's getting some time in there as Landry begins to put a few of his reserves into the game. Lips. He was coming across, he lost his footing. It slipped a little, but the, the big problem that the Steelers had, and that was Kevin Brooks. He was right in the face of Woodley. That means that Harry Newsom will be kicking, and Leon Gonzalez will be returning. This is the eighth part of the ball game for Newsom. Oh, another good one. He has really been running well. Bear catches his call for at the 30-yard line. Hang time is 4.8 seconds on the kick. That punt covered some 50 yards. We'll take a timeout. Cowboys lead it 27-13. Left to go in the fourth quarter. And the Cowboys have the ball on their own 31-yard line. First down. Tony Dorsett is 97 yards rushing, 82 yards receiving. So that's a total offense for Dorsett of 179 yards. They'll mark that to the 34-yard line. And if that stands up as a three-yard gain, that means that Dorsett has exactly 100 yards rushing. And I entered, just to restate a statement of a moment ago, this will be the first time he's ever had a 100-yard game rushing against the Pittsburgh Steelers. It is, right there. The 43rd of his career. Good news for the Cowboys. And, of course, their record for... A record for 100-yard games by this man. Uh, rather awesome here in the Coliseum, or in the uh, <laughs> Texas, Texas Stadium. Stadium. I played in the Coliseum. This is Texas Stadium, Charlie. Danny White throwing this one away. Jones, the closest receiver. When Dorsett has had 100 yards or more in the stadium, perfect record for the Cowboys. They have 126, and they have lost zero. And we paused briefly. For station identification, this is the NBC Television Network. This is Channel 4 in San Antonio, KMOL-TV. Overall, Dallas's record, just to add one more number to the list, is 40 and 2. 40 victories and 2 defeats when Dorsett has been over 100 yeah, yards. There's always some cause and effect. When you can run the ball effectively, and when you are running the football, it usually means you're in control of the game. Delayed blitz, the pass is incomplete. Intended receiver was Carl Poe. Poe, the rookie from Alabama State, where he was a track star, taken in the seventh round of the draft. And that means it'll be fourth down and seven. So Mike Saxon will come in to kick. And Rick Woods will be returning. Right now, Chuck Noll would like to have some of the firepower that these Steelers had for so long, the explosive combination of Terry Bradshaw to Stallworth and Swan. He's still got Stallworth, but hasn't been able to get the clicking by the quarterbacks today, although David Woodley had that one long throw to Calvin Sweeney. And Mike Saxon will be kicking. Another oh, another good kick. Good kick. Yeah. Good kick. Taken at the 16-yard line. A flag is down on the play. Hang time on that kick was five seconds even. Boy, the punting has been outstanding. A 51-yard kick, maybe a three-yard return if it stands up. Salonen and Eastman were down very quickly for Cowboys. No chance for Woods. He's looking up into that sun. Oh, and that's... <laughs> Somehow the bad news comes in droves, Charlie. 
a holding call against the Steelers to put them even further back toward their own goal line. And the last thing Chuck Knoll needs now is to be told that his team is going to have to move almost, well, 91 yards to get into the end zone. Well, there he there marks. 90 and a half yards, Charlie. Three, three minutes and 56 seconds is the time remaining in the ball game. It's Dallas 27 and Pittsburgh 13. And don't forget, later today, the Battle of the Finish continues on NBC Game 5. Toronto Blue Jays against the Kansas City Royals. And then this evening, the Dodgers and the Cardinals all here on NBC Sports. See Mike Webster pointing at the at the uh, line there. Looks like a blitz now. Let's see if they go through with it. Nope, dropping out of there. Woodley, Sweeney is deep, got behind the man who was covering him, but he got behind him after the pass had been released. Michael Downs was there. Charlie, Ernie Stotner has put together a, a pressure defense. They took the flex defense, and they've begun to remodel it. They don't run nearly as much of the pure flex anymore. They show you some varieties off of it. They've gone to a higher mix of dogs and blitzes. They really can put the pressure on you. And then on a play like that, they come up, they look like they're in a pressure defense, a blitzing defense, and suddenly drop out of it into a regular defense. We call that window dressing. The Cowboys are very good at it. Second and 10 from the 10. Trailing by two touchdowns and two extra points. And here's Pollard on the draw. 17-yard line. He's got seven, so it'll be third down and three. Let's check the NFL scoreboard. This is the final. Cleveland 21, Houston 6. New England over Buffalo 14 to 3. Washington, they win it 24 to 3 over Detroit. Back to our live action. Oh, the pass yep. is complete to Lewis Lips. And Lips has his first reception of the day and a first down, a gain of 10 yards on the play. What a great catch. Had to turn almost all the way around to catch that football. Gives him a first down. Three minutes, 11 seconds. Woodley needs another one quickly here. And remember, the Steelers have only two timeouts remaining as he goes to Calvin Sweeney, 35-yard line. Charlie, again, do they have two timeouts or excuse one me, timeout? Excuse me, they've, they've used two. They have one timeout remaining. Oh, I'm looking at overtime in that one. And Philadelphia leading St. Louis. One timeout remaining. I'm glad you corrected me on that because all of a sudden, if they can put something together here, an onside kick, and uh, well, those, those two, one was by the offense and one was by the defense, and those were both mistakes. They really were, Charlie, and, and they probably avoided mistakes on the field, but they, it's costly. When you come down to the last seconds of the game, you got a chance to get something going, and you don't have the, an ability to stop the clock. Second down and one. Pretty good protection. Here's Lips. He's got it inside the 20-yard line. 18-yard line. Lois Lips all of a sudden comes to life with a battle with Ron Fellows. Everson Walls had gone over to the other side of the field to solo up on on Stallworth, but watch Lips go back behind again, takes it over the shoulder. Fellows turning all the way around, 46 yards on the reception, and very quickly the Steelers are down in position where they might be able to get it into the end zone. Looking at it from the end zone, you'll see how well they were able to work on Ron Fellows here. They twist him all the way around, and Lips adjusted to the ball and went out of bounds. And give credit to that offensive line of the Steelers. They're giving Woodley all kinds of time. First down at the Dallas 18-yard line. Here comes the blitz again, Charlie. The all-out blitz, and they picked it up. Sweeney knocked away. Good defense. There's the play. call. There's the flag, Charlie. Interference. Got it. He hit him too soon. No wonder it looked good. The one thing about a blitzing defense. If you can pick that defense up, you know you've got one-on-one -on -one man to man coverage. Victor Scott tried to cover from the outside and simply couldn't do it without grabbing onto the receiver. The signal from the referee, Tom Dooley, pass interference. Pass interference, 22 defense, plus down. And as we said, it was on number 22, Victor Scott. He was Here's the play. Behind. Calvin Sweeney. He saw, the, he saw the blitz developing. He went inside, and Scott just used that hand from behind to push him. Got him with the left hand. First down goal to go nine. His pressure. Fired incomplete. Lips the intended receiver. It'll be second down and goal to go back at the nine-yard line. Boy, and I'm the Steeler offenses look better with Woodley. Once he got over the jitters, he's looked good, hasn't he? 
Woodley just got level <laughs> to Charlie. Jeffco got him from the blind side and just ran over him. He put a lot of steam on that ball. Really almost threw it through defender and receiver. No concern, I'm sure, not just about this game. I know his concern goes to the length of this ball game. And don't forget the concern over the clock. Two minutes and 48 seconds left to go in the ball game. Second down goal to go, nine yard line. Pump fake. And he missed it. Lips was alone. Had a little breathing room at the five. He could have caught it. If he'd have been on target, I'm not sure if he could have gone in, Merlin, but he could have made the reception with a good pass. A long arm fake from David Woodley, the quarterback, right here. Watch him. He'll just give you the fake, and Lips will stop and come back. But Woodley put it a little too far outside and a little too high. Good pattern. Good execution, except for the location of that pass. And we're in four down territory. They will disdain a field goal attempt here. Well, they certainly are. They might possibly go here to get themselves down close to that goal line, Charlie, rather than try and punch twice yeah. for the goal line. Third down goal to go. There's the last time out. Ooh. There's the I last time out. I can understand this one more than the other two because you can afford mistakes maybe early in the ballgame. Here you can't afford a mistake. So I think this is a good call. I like this call. Well, if you, you, yeah. you don't want to you don't want to blow the opportunity yeah. down here. But Charlie, the only way to win this game is to score this touchdown and come back and get a chance at another one. The important thing, though, if you don't score this one, you have the coach chance. <laughs> no talking to Woodley here. Woodley explaining his reasons for calling the timeout, and I, I'm sure Noel is not happy. He probably won't say anything about it here. He'll talk to him later about that. And you see, you see them now discussing what they're going to call the strategy here. Now you've been, you know, you've been in those huddles on the sideline, listening in to see what they're talking. What are they talking about? How much of a discussion is it? Is, some, is it a like, what do you like, what do you like type of thing? Sometimes. I, I think, though, that Tom Moore will have some input. He'll be calling down from upstairs. Yeah. He's the offensive coordinator. Woodley coming out may have a suggestion for a play. You see Noel putting on the headphones here. He'll be talking to Tom Moore from upstairs. And very often it's a meeting of the mind. But usually in a crucial situation like this, unless... An offensive coordinator has a strong feeling. This man right here, Chuck Noel, will make that call. Will he make the call, or with his philosophy, with his quarterbacks calling so much of the oh, plays, will he, he, he call this one? He'll call a play, I think. Uh, you know, Noel and Tom Moore call about 25% of the plays anyway. Yeah. And I think in this situation, they will call a play, in particular for Woodley. Now let's check the scoreboard. First quarter, oh, the Bears out in front. 7 nothing, Chicago. Mike Ditka here for many years as an assistant to Landry, certainly uh, getting things going in Chicago. And another final, Green Bay defeating Minnesota 20 to 17. I still think Bud Grant's doing it with mirrors with Minnesota, though. He does not have that kind of talent, and he really, All really right. does a good job. Let's see what Woodley and these now, remember, can do. Third down, third down, so they've got two opportunities. Third down goal to go. To the three. Smart call. You like it. I like the call. Tell me. The blitz was coming. Now, what you can do against that blitz, if you can pop the line of scrimmage with a running call, there's nobody back there to pick it up. Now they're just huddling right back on the line of scrimmage. They call two plays during the timeout. Here's there. Oh! Did not get it there in time. Victor Scott, who got that call a moment ago for interference, was in the right position on that play. David Woodley trying to lob it over the head of Scott, get it into the end zone to Ehrenberg. Scott simply picked it off. And then almost, he was angry. Watch, now watch the play. Ehrenberg is going to come back and dump Scott on his head. Or Thurman, not, not, not Scott, Dennis Thurman. Now watch Thurman stand up. At, Let's, can we see the end of that? He wanted to hit him with the football. I mean, he was going to throw <laughs> that football right back in his face. Here it is. Watch him as he dumps him. Now watch Thurman stand up. Watch this. He wants, he decides, oh. boy, I'll tell you, that would be a penalty, too. He's lucky he didn't do it. And here's Dorsett from the 20 to the 26. Now, Dennis Thurman, that is his fifth interception of the season. And that is an interception in each of the last four ball games, including this one. 
his 36th career interception and could save the ball game. We've got the two-minute warning to both pitches. We'll take a timeout. Cowboys lead it. Line up next week, Charlie. That's just a guess on my part. It's interesting because I would have guessed the other way. So between the two of us, we're going to be right. <laughs> well, Charlie, I don't think I don't think our guess is going to matter much because Chuck Noll is going to call that shot. Here's Charlie Parsett. No, and he never has called me during the week to ask my opinion on that. Final score, Tampa Bay defeating oh. the Rams. No, excuse me, the, the Rams, Rams came back. Came back because Tampa Bay was leading all the way. Rams came back in that Ooh. ball game. You see this Jim Chopper, the quarterback coach, making the signal from the sideline. There'll be two quarterback or two men making those signals, and Landry allows Dorsett to come off and take his recognition from the crowd. I like that. I like that. I do too. I do too. Here's John Williams. And the clock will be just allowed to continue on its inexorable march. 107 and counting. The Steelers cannot call a timeout. They're Steelers out of timeout. No timeout. Uh, White just has to control the football. The second down. Just watching the countdown. 58 57. And in some ways, a very satisfying day for Danny White. Danny has had some problems this year and had a few minor problems today, but mostly. He's done it all right today. He's been hot with his passing game. Got good, uh, good performance out of his running game. Of course, they've got the big score on the board. And he's counting down the 30-second clock. He takes the snap with two seconds to go on the 30-second clock. And yeah. now we have 30 seconds to go on the game clock, and so that's it. He doesn't have to take another snap. That should wrap it up. Chuck Noll has his head set off. He's seen his Steelers lose their third game in a row. They go to a two and four record. That's that is not the kind of Steeler football that those fans up there are used to seeing. And you've seen the Dallas Cowboys win their fourth in a row, and their record now is five and one. Tony Dorsett. That will be interesting. I, we'll have a chance, I think, to talk to Tony Dorsett, get his feelings on the day. So the milestone today, Tony Dorsett reaching the 10,000-yard rushing mark. The Dallas.